Tillman KTV Sports and the Nebraska Wesleyan University Sports Network presents Prairie Wolves Football. Today it's a conference matchup featuring the Cohawks of Coe College and your Nebraska Wesleyan University Prairie Wolves. This game is made possible by Lincoln Electric System. It's your electricity, own it. And Nebraska Wesleyan University, NWU. Now let's take you out to Abel Stadium with Jeff Motes and John Harris. An absolutely gorgeous afternoon for college football here in Lincoln. Welcome to Abel Stadium along with John Harris. I'm Jeff Motes here on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network on LNK TV. It is the Co College Cohawks and the Nebraska Wesleyan Prairie Wolves. A big conference game here for this team today uh, at Abel Stadium with Co coming into Lincoln, John. The one thing that about Nebraska Wesleyan, what they need to search for is a running game. They've only had over 100 yards on the ground in one game this season. That was back in week two against Illinois College. Yeah, it's going to be, it's been tough sledding for Wesley and is trying to find that right guy, Jeff. You know, you have Ryan Lawrence out there, you have Monte Washington, you have uh, DeMichael, DeMichael Burton. Somebody has to step up and step in. It starts with the offensive line, opening up some holes so these guys can run through. One thing about Coe College, uh, when you look at them on defense, now Wesleyan has the number one uh, offense in the conference. Coe has got the number one passing defense, and they're a team that can be very scrappy and try to stop that passing game. They've had nine interceptions in six games this season. So, yes, the running game is very important today. Yeah, zone defense will get you that. You can, you can slack off. Guys have to find spaces and spots. So Logan Hughes will be important. Tim's will be important. Uh, Derek Curtis will be important. Just going in, settling down, and giving Curdy a great target to pick, it, pick through that zone. Jonathan Curdy again, is the guy that will be the target for Coe College today. Curdy obviously, with some great numbers, passing the football. He can run the football a little bit, but, again, the passing game is going to be key for Coe to try to stop here this afternoon and make Wesleyan run the football. So your objective, again, stop Curdy as much as possible. Well, it starts with the offensive line. The offensive line has to protect, has to, uh, again, you know, we talked about the inexperience of the offensive line, but today to keep this Coe College team at bay and to keep our defense off the field, you know, 61 points last week, this defense is tired. So, so we're going to keep them off the field, but that only happens if the offense is moving the ball. And this is the perfect time to rebound from that loss last week at Wartburg College. So when you look at the key players today, let's look at – Wesley and Jonathan Curdy. He has thrown for over 1,500 yards. He's had 18 touchdowns, became the career passing leader for touchdowns at Nebraska Wesleyan two games ago against Simpson. Uh, he is fifth in NCAA Division Three for touchdowns. He is second in active Division Three passing yard per game, and he's also facing the number one passing defense uh, today in Co College. So, Curdy, a guy to keep an eye on today. And the other thing, he's only thrown two interceptions this season. Well, he's been smart with the ball. That's the key. Hasn't pushed the ball into double and in triple coverage. And so, being smart with the ball, taking the ball, throwing the ball away when you have to has been something. He's a veteran. He knows how to play this game. The other guy on defense for Nebraska Wesley, remember a couple of weeks ago against Simpson, it was a heartbreaking loss for uh, the Prairie Wolves on homecoming against Simpson. But Hayden Penny was a guy that really stood out on defense. Look for him to try to continue that effort today. He's forced one fumble this season. He's had back-to-back two-sack games as well, uh, going back to the Simpson game and last week against Wartburg. Well, Hayden Penny, he's been what I call the, cra the chaos creator. He's wreaking havoc right there at the uh, defensive tackle spot. Uh, again, 28 tackles, five sacks. We'll need more of that from him today. On the other side, Coe College got Quentin White at quarterback. He's a pretty good passer, too. In fact, he's thrown for over 1,100 yards this season for 10 touchdowns. However, when you look at the comparisons between him and Jonathan Curdy in terms of the number of interceptions, White's throwing five interceptions to Curdy's two on the season. Also has a twin brother that he likes to go to in Colton. Yeah, that's his number one receiver, and, and he trusts him, and that may be part of the challenge there. When you trust your brother uh, you know, from birth, you're going to throw the ball at him. You might throw it into double coverage. He's taken a, little, uh, a few more chances, five interceptions uh, to Curdy's two. Hunter Semmelroth is another guy that you need to keep an eye on on defense. He's a cornerback. In fact, he's a, one of the reasons why they've got a good passing defense that ranks first in the conference. Of the nine interceptions in the six games they've had this year, he's got three of those interceptions. Well, when you play zone defense, you can you can back off. You can give the safeties a little bit more responsibility. And, and Simmeroth is that classic, what you call rover. He's that guy who kind of finds him, himself roaming around, roving around. And, again, he's a smart player out there at cornerback. Uh, Wesleyan will have to keep their eyes on him today. 
Should be interesting. Can Wesleyan bounce back and avoid their third straight loss of the season here at home? We'll find out in a matter of moments. Kickoff is just moments away in a gorgeous afternoon in Lincoln. Nebraska Wesleyan Co College. It's the Prairie Wolves and the Cohawks. They're next on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. When you're out to make a difference in the world, begin by exploring what inspires you at Nebraska Wesleyan University. The bridge between you and meaningful, unforgettable experiences designed from personal attention to internships to translate into success in your career and life. A place of powerful learning designed to explore you, discover you, propel you. Nebraska Wesleyan University, NWU. Oh, hi there. Sorry, couldn't see you at first. I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money Saving Energy, and it's first filter Friday, so I'm just checking my furnace filter here. Looks like it's about time for a clean one, which I just happen to have right here. You know, a small investment today can really reduce your heating costs and improve your efficiency. You can really see the savings. Yeah? <laughs> for more tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. We will see you next time. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. Becca here at Able Stadium on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network, seen on LNK TV. Jeff Motes, John Harris, and all of you with us today. Thank you so much for being here on a very gorgeous afternoon for football, John. And uh, this doesn't feel like it's mid to late October in Lincoln. <laughs> it really doesn't. Yeah, well, it's good to be back in the saddle after two weeks uh, hiatus for me, but uh, enjoyed being back here. And it's a great day, 68 degrees. The wind, not uh, a huge factor at this point, but uh, it, it is a great day for football and Great day for a Nebraska Wesleyan Prairie Wolf win. Well, if they would have played this game yesterday or last night, that football would have been caught up in all sorts of gusty, gusty southerly breezes that were in this area last night. There you see the numbers in comparison of both teams. Passing defense, there you see how things rate between both them. And then uh, turnovers, that's an interesting little side note. Uh, zeros right there, but uh, the rushing game, that definitely heavily weighs in favor of of Co College. Yeah, the, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And Nebraska Wesleyan's first in passing, last in rushing. And so today, we're going to have to find the stride with uh, Lawrence or Washington or Burton. Someone's going to have to pick up the slack here to take some of the pressure off of Curdy and the passing game. There you see the coin flip here at midfield as they determine who will be. Uh, receiving to start out who will kick away there you see the quarterback comparisons head to head uh, again the interceptions two only thrown by Curdy this year five for Quentin White that's that's the big difference and uh, that's something that's really going to st stand out well all, both both guys are veterans as well and that's the key they know they, they know how to play this game it looks like uh, Coe is going to be receiving and uh, and so sometimes those interceptions Jeff come not necessarily that you threw the ball badly to a guy but the ball got tipped a receiver didn't catch the ball and the ball caroms up in the air uh, so interceptions they always get credited to the quarterback uh, but they happen in so many different ways there you see uh, coming off the field of course the captains for Nebraska Westland uh, among them Cortez of course Nick Nicholas Cortez who got hurt earlier and uh, that that's a guy that uh, has been sorely missed there you see the coaching staff and on the far left there is the head coach, Brian Keller, 24th season with the Prairie Wolves. He is a Nebraska Wesleyan graduate, played here back in the late 70s, early 80s. 120 wins and 116 losses here in the 24 seasons that he's been here at Abel Stadium and here at uh, the Wesleyan campus. And we got to get see if Shaka got some more eligibility sitting up there in the booth up there. Yeah. <laughs> Boy. That's, and that's been the challenge for Wesleyan. You know, whether, when you have a guy as versatile as Shaka Taylor who can not only run the ball with power and with speed but also catch the ball out of the backfield, you have so many options relative to your running back. They don't have that this season. 
So the Prairie Wolves will kick away. They will receive to begin the second half. Code receive here to begin this ball game. So Michael Vandenberg will boot it deep. And that will go right at the one, and it's dropped, and they're going to fake the reverse. On the return, here, come, here comes Coe, and all the way up to about the 25-yard line, the return that time by... That's Josh Bishop there. Yep, Josh Bishop, the junior, 5'8", 165. And there you see the starting lineup here on defense. Broughton and Hall, we talked about Penny. There's Smith, Caden Daw, Jacob Garnis. We mentioned him a time or two during the course of the season. He's... Been a guy that's stepped up and helped out a lot, especially at the linebacker spot. He's the interior linebacker. And uh, Dexter and everybody else you see there toward that secondary. Going to be very key for them today here to see if they can stop this passing attack. And right off the bat, Coe going to go with a pass play that is caught around the 34-yard line. And the reception made here on the near side of the field by Sam McCartney, the junior out of DeSoto, Iowa. There you see the starters. You got Quentin White. You got Aguilar there, too. You got uh, Drawley, Green, t -Pole, Meyer, Richter, Alcott, Owens, uh, Lilyfield, and others on that uh, offensive setup. And, of course, uh, White, uh, Colton White, the brother of the quarterback, Quentin White, out there as well. Here is a handoff around the right side, and it's Drawley who gets the handoff. He's the senior out of Cedar Rapids. The hometown kid with the carry gets a pickup of two up to the 36. That's a great job by Wesley. They do get the first down, but Wesleyan running to the football, everybody running to the football to make the tackle, and that's a great job of at the point of attack holding the Co College Cohawks at bay for just a minimal gain. So a new set of downs here. They'll work from the 36. And again, Quentin White, the senior quarterback. It's in a man in motion. Blitz was being shown there at one point by Wesleyan. They got a guy over the middle at the 45 of Wesleyan. First down, and it was Pro Rock who tripped up the receiver that time, which uh, happened to be Mitch Stopko out of the uh, backfield, who was listed as a running back, but went out as a receiver that time, and he makes the catch. And yeah, that, that's the challenge of today, Jeff, is that secondary. And White, he found an open space, and Stopko, he found the open space and his big time down the field. Passing again. Over here on the near side again. Stop go again up to about the 19-yard line of Nebraska Wesleyan. Yeah, this quick strike offense is, is wasting no time taking advantage of the passing game. Not a whole lot of running here. White having a field, field day thus far. Low snap. White got an open man and breaking tackles inside the 10 to about the 7-yard line. And the catch made over there is Teepole again who made the catch. And it'll be a first and goal just like that. First and goal for the Cohawks. Yeah, they're not wasting any time at all. And the Wesleyan secondary, again, three guys sideline, three starters sideline there. Uh, but you've got to get some pass rush on this quarterback. Veteran player, guy knows how to play this game, knows what he's looking for. The sand and man in motion. We played just over two minutes of football. Little zone read and a handoff and short gain to about the four yard line. And the Prairie Wolves got a stop there that time from great job Nick Broughton, who came in and made the tackle. Hey, great job by Broughton. Just tracking down the line of scrimmage gets him from behind. And the Cohawks with a second down here. Wesleyan has to find a way. This defense, boy, I tell you what, on the field a lot last week. Got to find a way to at least get them a, a field goal attempt, if nothing else. Second and goal. And it's a handoff to Drawley. Gets down to about the two. Got a pickup of two. So that'll bring up a third and goal here and a chance again for Coe to try to put one in. But the Wesleyan defense looking to get a big stop here. Hey, you, Penny what, was over there. What you have to be careful of here, Jeff, is uh, with White, you know, he's going to put that ball in the belly, and then if uh, if the defensive end pull comes down, he's going to pull it out and try to get around the edge. So someone has to maintain, contain on the outside here just in case he pulls that ball out of the belly of Drawley. Third and goal. His brother's out here on the outside here, one-on-one. -on -one. Watch the back shoulder. Drawley gets behind a blocker and takes it right into the end zone. And a touchdown for Coe College, and that took just under 
four minutes, about four and a half minutes it took to get downfield, or not even that, three and a half minutes to get downfield and put one in. Yeah, 329 to be exact, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And they're going to be attempting this, this extra point as they get the first points on the way. They draw first blood, if you will. Here's the point after attempt. That thing is up, and it is good. So the kick goes through for Tristan Connell. And so with 11.31 to go, Coe strikes first. Took about three and a half minutes to get the scoring drive finished. They're up 7-0 on the Prairie Wolves. Oh, hi there. Sorry, couldn't see you at first. I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy, and it's first filter Friday, so I'm just checking my furnace filter here. Looks like it's about time for a clean one, which I just happen to have right here. You know, a small investment today can really reduce your heating costs and improve your efficiency. You can really see the savings. Yeah? <laughs> for more tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. We will see you next time. All it took was eight plays, 75 yards, and a short two-yard run from that guy that you see on your TV screen. Tyler Drawley is the guy that took it in. He's the senior out of Cedar Rapids, again, the hometown kid for Coe College. Yeah, that was, that was too easy, Jeff, and uh, Nebraska Wesley is going to have to get something going to not get that offense back on the field anytime soon. And so Coe will boot it away, and Wesley will let that one go out of the end zone for a touchback, and they'll put it at their own 25-yard line. That's where they'll begin their first offensive effort of the afternoon. And so let's see what Coach Keller comes up with here on this first drive of the ball game for Nebraska Wesleyan. And you got to get a couple of first downs. There you see the starters again. Curdy Lawrence will be the running back. Mathis, Braley Keller, the two wideouts. Hughes, the tight end. The line made up of Walsh, Chambers, Gomez, Weaver, Davis. And there's the other wideout, Derek Curtis from Lincoln Northeast. So from their own 25 out of the pistol, here is Curdy looking to throw, has some time, looking over the middle, got somebody there at the 43 of Cole, breaking a tackle, still hanging on though for dear life. What a grab that was, coming downfield. It was Mathis who made the grab, and a first and 10 here at the Cole 19 for Nebraska Wesleyan. Oh, that's a big play coming off the score by Cole College and Wesleyan. Answers back. Tremendous pass and catch by Mathis. And he's just one of, one, one of the guys that uh, we need to step up today. He started, he started off well here. Grant Barth, the split on the far side right. Here on the left, it's Curtis. Out of the pistol. They're going to go to Lawrence. Cuts back out. Now back in. Didn't get too far. He probably got about, oh, a pickup of six down to the 13 of Coe. Not I, bad. I was wondering if he could have beat him to the edge there. There you see the uh, defensive arrangement there for Coe. Elam over there. Nah. Melcher over there as well. Rickard, Fernandez, Lopez, among others. Semeroth is the guy in the secondary that we, we mentioned in our pregame. Uh, of the nine interceptions that Coe has this season, he's got three of them. So if they look to go deep at any other point today, watch for him. Yeah, you got to keep an eye on him if you're Curdy. Blitz being shown here. Curdy pitch and catch inside the 10 at about the 8. Yard line looked like a little gun wrench suplex taken there that time by <laughs> Jacob Ellsbury to take him down. All of that WWE stuff influencing our culture. <laughs> well, we've seen a few rock bottoms done in this game too. Well, we got to be the game of football, I should yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. So what's happening here is Wesley and now their offense giving their defense some rest by moving the football. This is exactly what we needed to happen this this afternoon. First and goal from the eight of Cole. Curdy going to run the option, shovel toss. Braley Keller gets it. He tries to fight through traffic, gets down to the four yard line. How about that little Ford shovel pass? Oh, I like that. I like that. Look, the option look. And uh, I thought maybe he was going to pitch it to the running back, but no, we pitch it underneath to Brady Kel Braley Keller, son of the coach, senior from Lincoln, Nebraska here. He's a former Northeast Rocket. So just that's like, a tremendous job. Just like Derek Curtis and just like Zach Chambers. Yeah, and what, the Northeast went right around the corner up here. Just straight east of here. So now you got to be, again, got to take advantage here. Second and four. 
You have a great wide receiver and Curtis out there. Along with Mass Mathis, who's on the outside. Second and goal. Curdy looking to the far corner. Curtis had it, but it goes incomplete. It was into traffic, but it was a good look, and we've seen Derek Curtis make some of those acrobatic catches before. Yeah, Brian Robertson right there to put his hand right there with Derek Curtis. He, he, he saw the ball, had an opportunity to get it, looking right at it. He sees it, and Robertson right there. Good defense. Tremendous job. Defensive back doesn't have to catch the ball, but what he can do is when the receiver gets his hands on it, just like Robertson did there, just dislodge it with the offhand, and he does it. Does a great job. Third and goal from the fourth co. Wesleyan trying to put one in. Down 7 nothing early on. Here is Curdy. He's going to take the football. Jump pass is intercepted. Picked off at the two. Running back to the far side and all the way out of bounds. Logan Rickard scooped up that ball and returned it back. And there's the first turnover of the game. And Logan Rickard with a big play defensively. And yeah, big play is right. Boy, I'll tell you what. Uh, you want to eat that. We talked about it at the outset, how smart he's been with the football. That time, not so much. And uh, trying to make a play right there, looking at it. He has an opportunity. Don't see who he's trying to. Maybe his arm got hit. But the ball took a downward trajectory, and uh, Coe you know, answers the bell. Might have been a foul there after the play. Number 44, they, personal foul, late hit. Oh, out there of we bounds. go. Half the distance to the goal. <laughs> First down, Cole. Say it, and it happens. But uh, what a tremendous job by Cole. They get the interception. They uh, turn Wesley in away, not even from a field goal attempt. And now the defense back on the field. Huge play. Now, you hope that doesn't alter things with the offense the rest of the way or get into the mindset of Curdy. That's that, his third yeah, interception that yeah, he's thrown this yeah, year. I, I wouldn't think so, but... Uh, you know, but it, well, he'll he'll learn from that mistake. Uh, again, you could have just eaten that one, kicked the field goal, and got some points on the board. It looks like Trolley again gets the carry, and Garnis was over there for Wesleyan to help make the tackle. Nice a few job. others over there too. Yeah. Justin Hall. Yes, sorry about that. Nice job at the point of attack by Wesley. Defense. The running game uh, for Cole uh, hasn't found any openings just yet, and of course uh, with with White back there. Yeah, his first thing he wants to do is pass the ball. But you got to have balance, and that's the key for both teams. You have to have some balance, at least the threat of a run from time to time. This will be second and nine. Now White got a man over there around the 26-yard line and forced out of bounds. That was his brother, Colton. Well, he was bobbling the ball there, but uh, they, they won't see that. Uh, you could see if you if we saw a replay, he was bobbling the ball as he went out of bounds. So maybe they said he made the catch and bobbled it as he was going out. Little spot from the 27, another pass play. It is complete around the 33, and the catch made by Sam McCartney that time. He was dragged down on the play by Caden Daw. Well, we'll find out today is how in shape the Nebraska Wesleyan team is. Uh, they like to play the edges here, Co College, uh, throwing a lot of those out routes. And again, he, that's a setup for something down the middle. So you have to really maintain coverage here if you're Wesleyan. They'll go trips on the far side left in the upper part of your screen. And they'll run the ball as Drolley gets behind a blocker and he gets the first down all the way up to the 38-yard line. And so the yard markers will move up. And now the Wesleyan defense is really being tested. Yeah, Wesleyan has to tackle well. If you come up from the secondary, as we saw there, one of the cornerbacks came up, but he ran right past the ball carrier. you got to be able to make that stop for minimal gain. White all by himself in the backfield. He'll spread it out here on first and 10. Pass play complete to his twin brother Colton, who has ran out of bounds across the 45. They're going to put him close to the 47-yard line. Now, you remember back in the day, you know, with Andre Ware, they had that, that run and shoot down in Houston. And yeah. This is, this is a quick strike, man. This is, this is a quick strike offense. Tom Brady-esque, where you just take a step and throw the ball. And you work the edges like crazy. Yeah, and then all of that is a setup for what you're trying to do down the middle. Second and short, about a yard to go. And a man in motion over here as they sent Stopko. 
Now a handoff cutting out to the far side. Got to make the tackle. Out of a shoestring tackle on the run. Still Cody Russell, the fullback, able to cut out to the far side and get the first down. Ran out of bounds at the Wesleyan 40. Boy, I'll tell you what, he's, he, you're talking about a bull in a china shop. My goodness, you have to make that tackle on the edge if you're Wesleyan. They don't get it done. And he's off to the races outside. Okay, and here it is right here. Have an opportunity right there. Got to make that tackle. That's turn, Tanner Laramore. And so just like that, Coe is into Wesleyan territory as he give it up here in a flag of the play stop. Uh, stop go that time, got the carry. And now a flag coming out. Looks like it's going to go against Coe. I like running down the line of scrimmage there. Jacob Garnis and company. Lamory is what I should have Number said. Number 62 on the offense. 10 yard <laughs> penalty. Repeat first down. So holding. Holding against the Cohawks. That helps Wesley, and I'll tell you what, they, anything we can do to get these guys going in the other direction is helpful. They'll spot it at the Cohawk 48. Just under six minutes to go. Glad to have you here on LNK TV, the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Prairie Wolves football is powered by Lincoln Electric System. Also, a few other sponsors to thank today. Quality Water Services, Madsen's Bowling and Billiards, Petro Family Dental Health, Rotella's Italian Bakery, Joyce Sherwood of Central Financial Services. Blitz is on, and the toss is going to be short and incomplete. How about that? The barrage of those dark jerseys that Wesleyan has coming in and going after Quentin White. And it was Anthony Gallardo that led the charge. He was right there, right toward the grill of White. That's a tremendous job by Gallardo. And, again, chaos creators, that's what you have to be. Reckless abandon off that defensive line. line Just to get in there and, and, and intercept or uh, make some, some trouble. There you go. But, see, that's what they, they almost had something going there with that uh, screen play. That's exactly the play you want when you have guys rushing like that. Here's a pass completed the 40-yard line. A good look from White. And the catch made by the receiver, Matt Kopp, the tight end. He's out of Belvedere, Illinois. Yeah, they're finding soft spaces, Jeff, in that Wesleyan zone defense. Boy, I'll tell you. And again, the veteran that, that White is, uh, this guy knows how to find his guys in White. And uh, did, did a tremendous job finding Kopp right there. This will bring up third and nine here for Cole. Big, big uh, down for Wesleyan. If we can get off the field here. White looking to throw. Got a man there, but he had the stone hands at the 30-yard line. It goes incomplete. The intended target was McCartney. It's one of those things that you like to bring up every now and then. And uh, now fourth down. But you're thinking about running instead of yeah, catching the ball. Let's see it here. Let's see it here. Yep, turned his head at the, at the last second there instead of looking the ball in his hand. They're going to go for it on fourth down here. They're I, pretty confident. Yeah, I and I don't see why not. But, again, they're just settling down, Jeff. They're just running those little hook routes, out routes, and just settling down in the zone defense and uh, advancing the ball. Or as uh, Hank Stramp said, matriculating down the field. <laughs> so our first Hank Stram reference. A little play action here. Got a man open. Trouble's on. This could be trouble. He gets rid of the football at the 40. He's still on his feet as Russell. He could get the first down. He does. You have got to be kidding me. It was a broken play, and coming through was Cody Russell. He circled around. He found a path downfield. He gets the first down, finally stopped at the 22 of Nebraska Wesleyan. You can't believe it. You can't believe it. But, again, it's all about making plays. White does it here. We have him here dead to rights right there. Justin Hall get him. was right there. And now we still got him nine yards from the first down. Somebody's got to get a hand on him. And look at him. My goodness. Gets a little help from behind there. That's a big first down. That's huge. All off a broken play. And now Russell's going to get the carry. Gotta get him around the ankles if you're Wesleyan. And that, that just keeps this defense on the field. Again, they had a tough week last week. 
61 yeah. 7 loss at Warburg. Yeah, tough week again. I mean, again, against a, a very f formidable opponent. I mean, yeah, these guys are Warburg's ranked. A very good yeah, they're program. ranked. You know, so they, they're not, no, no slouches. But uh, this keeps our offense off the field as well. We were moving the ball quite well. Second and four here from the 16 of Wesleyan. Yeah, but give credit where credit is due. White to his brother Colton. Made the catch inside the five. They're going to spot him at uh, the – actually at the six. They're going to spot him at the six. Not quite to the five, but a first and goal here for Cull. Jacob Grauman there. Safety on coverage here. So a catch there by Colton White. He's a split far side left on the left side of your screen toward the top. They're going to give it up. Got to make a tackle. And Good Drolley job. gets the carry. Good pursuit that time by the Prairie Wolves. And that was Daw that was over there initially to get to make the stop. Good effort that time by him. Connor Adams was over there, too, for the Prairie Wolves. Yeah, that's the challenge. When you get your hands on these guys, you got to be able to bring them down. And everybody has to run to the ball. I still can't get over that, that broken play. Oh, it was unbelievable. Down. It was tremendous. Want to be was... careful here out on the edge. you got two guys out wide. Fake the jet sweep. Russell's going to get the carry to give it to the big... Fullback who tries to get in toward the end zone. He is going to be stopped short at the one. Got a helmet that came off. I think he was trying to clear the plane, and it's the fullback, Russell, had his helmet come off. He's going to have to come out yeah, for a play. Yeah, he's got to come out. We want to take his helmet off with regularity. You find a way. That might be the play of the game there. They get his helmet off. So he'll have to get out of the game. He's, he's a lineman playing fullback. <laughs> I mean, are you serious? He's a he's a good runner. He's he's a burly kid, but <laughs> I love the word there, burly. But he's a very good runner. Oh, tremendous, tremendous, strong. From the one, third and goal. They're going to give it up now to Drolly. Takes it in for the touchdown. That's a good job, boy. That's a nice response. You're right there. Nebraska West, Nebraska Wesleyan is on the doorstep around the four yard line. They get the interception and then the and turnabout fair play. Down the other side, and his second touchdown of the game, I believe, powers it into the end zone. But that third down play, fourth down play, actually, was the play of the drive. That was huge. You want to talk about recovery, and, you know, you, you can say all oh, that. They got lucky there. I, I think no matter what the circumstance was going to be, had he not gotten the first down, that would have been an amazing play regardless. Oh, tremendous. And, and, and give credit to White for eluding the, the rush. We have two guys in the backfield. We're thinking one, somebody's going to get him. Well, as uh, Oberman says, they're not going to get him. And, uh, and now they're kicking the extra point up 13 zip. Here's Connell to do the point after. The kick is up, and it is good. 15 plays, 88 yards, 6 minutes and 38 seconds. And it's Drolly who takes it into the end zone for Coe to extend their lead now over Nebraska Wesleyan, 14 to nothing. I just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But I also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience, not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that. And it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. There you see the play again to finish off the drive. That was Drolly for his second touchdown of the game. Now, once again, as Coe College responded to the, the interception from Wesley, as Wesleyan was driving into the end zone, or near the end zone, if you will, to the four-yard line, the interception by Curdy, they turned it back the other way, and now Wesleyan's offense, you know, offense has to now pick it up. Here's the kick, and it's going to go end over end. They're going to pick it up right at the goal line. Here come the Prairie Wolves on the kick return. It's Monte Robinson, and Robinson gets all the way up to almost the 30-yard line and gets to about the 29, so that's a 29-yard return. Yeah, I like that. For Monte Robinson. And that's the kind of, that, he's the kind of guy, Jeff, if you can get him out in the space, 
you know, from the, from the running back position. Get him out in the space. Let him use some of that elusiveness for Nebraska Wesleyan. He's holding his chest for some reason. Hopefully he's okay. Nothing too significant. Maybe a little bit of a bump of some sort that he took. And so for the second drive of the game here for Wesleyan, working from their own 29. Hughes in motion, the tight end. They're going to give it to Lawrence around left side, trying to stiff arm his way, but he's going to be taken down. Maybe for a one-yard loss, this will go back to about the 28. And he's, he's down. This has not been a good year for running backs in terms of injuries here on this football team. Had some guys go down, and it's been tough. Let's see what happens as he come around, comes around the side here. He gets outside. Now, remember. Ah, right there. Er, yep, right there. Earlier in the year, he, Lawrence went down with an injury against Buena Vista. Just got turned around a little bit, a little crooked there. And he went down. He did not finish that game. And again, now we have uh, Robinson uh, maybe coming in the ball game. Let's see who comes in. So Lawrence going out. Sophomore out of Omaha. And this again puts the onus on Curdy. A little bit too much, Jeff. Got to protect. Quick toss. That is Timms toward the edge. Bumped out around the 35-yard line. Let's see where they spot it. Right at the 35. And he's been a welcome addition to this team this season. Timms. He's just done a tremendous job. Hadn't seen anything from him early here, Kevin Timms. But uh, he's done a tremendous job. We've seen him, you know, <laughs> with a little bravado uh, in every game after he makes his catch. He's talking to the other team. This time, no time for talking, just time for playing. Well, he's got some versatility. He's also the backup quarterback for Wesleyan. 5'10, 175, a junior for the Prairie Wolves. Third and four. Need to convert here. Curdy's pass is tipped up, and it's intercepted at the 44. It was tipped up, and that allowed Coe to get the ball, the interception, and it's A.J. Christensen who comes up with the pick. Yeah, he had a man out in the flat. If we play that again, if Jamie, if you have that again, there was a man out in the flat that you, you – here he goes. Running, he's right out there on the right side, and he chose to go the other way. Not making good decisions today. Looking for Tim's. He did tip the ball, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, that and again, that happens. And we we talked about that earlier. Sometimes that interception is because someone tips the ball, tips off the the wide receiver's hands. It could be any number of things that happen. Uh, but that time he had a first down. If he would just look out to the flat, he had his running back wide open. So just under a minute to go here in this first quarter. Let's see if they go up top here. That's what they'll do. They'll air it out downfield into the end zone. Touchdown, Coe. First play from scrimmage. A 37-yard toss into the end zone. The catch made by Josh Bishop, the junior. Got behind the secondary. And again, that's usually what happens after a turnover. You want to do a quick strike. They get up top, and the defensive back allows him to get behind. Touchdown. That was uh, Dakota Pro, Pro Rock there. Couldn't keep up with Bishop. Now Connell will attempt the point after again. Here's the kick. It is up, and it is good. 50 seconds to go here. All of a sudden, Coe has a 21-0 lead over to the Nebraska Wesleyan Prairie Wolves here at Abel Stadium. When you're out to make a difference in the world, begin by exploring what inspires you at Nebraska Wesleyan University. The bridge between you and meaningful, unforgettable experiences. Designed from personal attention to internships to translate into success in your career and life. A place of powerful learning designed to explore you, discover you, propel you. Nebraska Wesleyan University, NWU. A few folks out today to enjoy uh, football and also enjoy the nice weather here in Lincoln. It was 68 degrees at kickoff, probably a little bit warmer than that right now. Beautiful afternoon here in Lincoln. Not a cloud in the sky, plenty of sunshine. And the flag is just kind of just... A little gentle breeze, not gentle much. Breeze. That's right. Now, what we have, Jeff, is uh, the thing we talked about earlier. 
You know, we thought White had five interceptions. Curdy had two. Well, guess what? Curdy's catching up. Curdy's now got four interceptions on the season, two of them happening today. And those, and those turnovers, again, the only place you want turnovers is in a bakery. You don't want them on a football field. And today those turnovers have uh, helped the, the Cohawks uh, to advance this lead now 21-0 over the Prairie Wolves. Now, that means that you know, they wouldn't have scored otherwise, but you give them a short field and you give them opportunities. My goodness, they're too good uh, to not take advantage. And that so, puts you on your heels. You know, now you've got to change your whole, the way you call plays, uh, everything. It's a long way to go. Still 50 seconds, still first quarter. Yeah, you got three more quarters after this. Try to stir something up. And, you know, we, we've seen this offense do good things this season. Yeah. The, the first drive of the game today looked absolutely promising, just yeah. well executed. Tremendous. A little zone read. Tim's on a short toss is buried back at the 30 yard line. And that time he was taken down on the play by Andy Lilligraven. And what he in a great play he made. He got past Braley Keller. And uh, again, everybody has to do their job. Keller has to sustain that block so that uh, the defender cannot cut inside of him. He does not, and uh, that, that, that goes for a four-yard loss. Final 20 seconds here of this first quarter. Curtis and is split on the left or the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. And so what happens to the Cohawks, they just, they just pin their ears back, man. They just, they're just coming. Zone read, Curtis toss complete to Hughes, the tight end. Hughes bumping his way up to the 40-yard line. So that'll bring up a third and five when we begin the second quarter of action here at Abel Stadium. So we'll switch ends here, but Coe College right away coming out with a couple of quick jabs, and all of a sudden they're up 21-0 over Nebraska Wesleyan here on LNK TV and the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Hi, I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy, and I wanted to share a hot tip about keeping warm in the wintertime. Instead of turning up your thermostat, turn on a portable space heater. After all, why heat your whole house when you only want the room you're in to be warm and toasty? Oh, that, that's too, too toasty. Uh, don't, don't touch that, Gracie. For more energy-saving tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. <clears throat> we'll uh, see you next time. Co College Cohawks out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, coming all the way to Lincoln today. They lead it 21 0 over Nebraska Wesleyan. Jeff Motes, John Harris, and the rest of our Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network crew with you this afternoon from a gorgeous Abel Stadium today with the fall colors showing across the street along 56th Street. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But right now, things are looking pretty good. Run it, Looking run it. Right now as Curdy found a guy downfield. It's Curtis who made the catch at the 15. He's finally brought down at the 11. What a catch that was with coverage all over Derek Curtis. Yeah, you can trust Curtis. Got to get your pink pink uh, towel there. I guess it's <laughs> use it as a marker right now. I thought he could run, Jeff, and he could. But he, he trusts Curtis so much. Look at that throw. Boy, look at that. What a Boom. throw. Boy, that's beautiful. What a play. And yeah, we need that. We need that. That's the shot in the arm that Wesleyan needed. And Curdy, you know, you talk about, is he going to be gun shy after those two interceptions? Well, I guess that tells the story right there. First and 10 from the 11 of Coe. And here is a handoff. And the ball carrier that time for Nebraska Wesleyan was Colby Enns, the junior out of Beatrice. Played his high school ball at Tri-County. Tri-County Trojan. So a second, and we'll call it five. This is from the six of Cole. You got to be smart here. Got to be smart if you're Nebraska Wesleyan here. Ends the backfield with Curdy, who's out of the gun. Going to give it to Ends. Ends trying to take it down inside. He got to the five-yard line, got a yard out of it. So now a third and four from the Co five-yard line. 
my crack staff is going to be working hard here to uh, share some of the co-college alums. You know, we talked about, you know, guys like uh, Fred Jackson played in the NFL, Marv Levy. Fred Hickman was on CNN for a long time. Yep. Kurt Menefee, who's on, on Fox right now, all co-college alums. I always liked Fred Hickman. He did a great job. He was always one of my favorites on CNN Headline Sports. Time out. First of the half. Taken by Nebraska Wesleyan with 13-14 remaining here before halftime. And Wesleyan on that front door. Need to put one in here as they're down 21-0 to the Cohawks. When you're out to make a difference in the world, begin by exploring what inspires you at Nebraska Wesleyan University. The bridge between you and meaningful, unforgettable experiences. Designed from personal attention to internships to translate into success in your career and life. A place of powerful learning designed to explore you, discover you, propel you. Nebraska Wesleyan University, NWU. I want to thank some other sponsors for these broadcasts. Nebraska Wesleyan Football, Quality Water Services, Matson's Bowling and Billiards, Petro Family Dental Health, Rotella's Italian Bakery, Joyce Sherwood of Central Financial Services, and of course, Prairie Wolves Football is powered by Lincoln Electric System here on LNK TV. 13-14 to go, second quarter. Third and four from the Co-5 for the Prairie Wolves. Out of the pistol. Here is Curdy. He's going to keep it himself. Takes it in. Did he get in there? Curtis says he did, and they're going to say oh, yes. Really Touchdown. Touchdown. Nebraska Westland. Jonathan Curdy on a quarterback draw play. Takes it in for the Prairie Wolves. Yeah, that's a great job. Curdy was just, just churning and burning, spinning and winning. And uh, we needed that response from Nebraska Westland after two big touchdowns on turnovers. And uh, he kind of got ahead here. He didn't follow his block. Now let's do a little spin move. Now let's push. Push, push, push. Weight room. There you go. Touchdown. And Michael yeah. Vandenberg will attempt the point after. And if nothing else, that just makes you feel good, you know, that we can, we can score. And we saw that earlier. Point after is good from Vandenberg. We just have over 13 minutes to go before halftime. Coe's lead down to 14 now. Prairie Wolves on the board. They trail 21-7. Hi, I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy, and I wanted to share a hot tip about keeping warm in the wintertime. Instead of turning up your thermostat, turn on a portable space heater. After all, why heat your whole house when you only want the room you're in to be warm and toasty? Oh, that, that's too, too toasty. Uh, don't, don't touch that, Gracie. For more energy-saving tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. <clears throat> we'll uh, see you next time. Jonathan Curdy, senior out of Colorado Springs with a touchdown run. And never too soon. I'll tell you what. That, I mean, we needed that bad, Jeff, because, uh, again, 21 nothing. Old Mo was all in white, and Wesleyan needed to grab some of it back. And now let's see if the defense can hold, get that offense back on the field. Ben Vizarek will kick away. Deep end over end kick. And the ball is dropped, but recovered on the move and quickly taken down hard was Bishop. Yeah, sometimes when you drop the ball as the returner, the, the, the defense, the, the, the team's running down, they, they kind of hold up. They pause for a moment, see where everything's going, and you, you're able to run by them. But not that time for Wesleyan. Bishop was corralled right around the 25-yard line. And now White in this offense back on the field again. They got a short field last time. Got it in one play to Bishop, 37 yards. Didn't take long and didn't take much. So this defense has to adjust to this short, quick strike passing game. We'll spread it out. And Whistle's going to have a flag come out, and it's a false start against... Co College. 17 on the offense. Still first down. Now, Co 
has yet to punt away. Yeah, Teeple's back there now for some reason playing quarterback. Unless they're going wildcat. That's not, you know, from this vantage point. Okay, okay, now 12 moved out. Now 17, maybe I just got my, my eyes crossed there. I thought number 12 is, 17 is there. Well, there he is, there's 12 right there. Here's an option pitch. Got a tackle, got a tackle. Daw was there initially to help make the stop, and the rest of the defense comes over to help make the tackle. That's a good job. And hopefully now this defense, Jeff, starts to get some confidence. You, know, you get those two strikes against you. You get three, of course, total. But uh, the last two have really, really kind of could demoralize you. You think, oh, this game's out of reach. No, you got to keep your confidence, maintain. It's a long game. Nobody wins the game in the first quarter or at halftime. Got to keep playing. And maybe, just maybe, a turnover will go our way. Yeah, coverage on the pass routes here. Second and long, and the ball is knocked down. And I think it was Broughton that's going to be credited with that, maybe. He was over in that area. Yeah, so there's that defense. There's that defensive excitement, passion we see there now. We got a big play here, third and 15. Now, we saw them make a huge third and, uh, fourth and nine earlier on a broken play. Let's see. Look at the pass rush. Hand in the passing lane. Great job there. That was Cam Rizel that had a hand in the passing lane, big number 77. Now, got to get off the field here, Jeff. Got to get off the field. This is a huge third down for both these teams. Coe trying to convert. Got somebody over here, and it's caught at the 39 and ran out of bounds, and a flag going to be thrown. That will be a late flag oh against Nebraska goodness. Wesleyan. Oh, my goodness. That is going to be a first down, and it's Colton White who comes up with a catch, the favorite target of Quentin. So they get out of a jam. And they're going to add 15 to it. Look at that. No need for that. That's a frustration foul right there. Personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 10 on the defense. 15 yard penalty, first down. Now he calls number 10. I thought that was 19 on the edge. That's 19. So what's number 10? There's no number 10. I think he just got the number wrong. Gojo at to pull you, the freshman out of Grand Island. Yeah, he There's makes a, a big, big mistake there on the route and afterwards. Fumble by Tipo. Yep, and it's a stop there as Justin Hall gets to make the stop. Yeah, see, we needed Tiepel, that on the last play. Tipo had a tough time holding on to the snap. So he was back there that last time. I so thought, I think they were going to try to go wildcat. Yeah, he was back there that last time. What a great play there by Wesleyan. Big number 91, Justin Hall in the backfield. Well, we've seen the defense be more aggressive here on this drive. And there's Hall again, a short screen toss is going to be caught at the 50. Dodging tackles, getting down to about the 40-yard line. The catch made by Stopko that time. It just seems that, the, you know, when that when that pass rush is on, they know exactly when to throw that screen play. But he he literally lobbed that ball in the air. <laughs> it would seem like it was up there for quite some time. I mean, how long was the hang time on that? <laughs> Let's take a look at it. Ooh, look at that. Uh, I mean, oh. there was a lot of air. <laughs> a lot of air in it, and that's what you got to do. So third and five. This is from the 40 haven't, of Wesleyan. You haven't seen big number 42 back in the game for a while. Pass play ah. is complete enough for a first down. Just missed it. Catch made by McCartney. Boy, he threw that in, into tight coverage. And as our good friend Maxwell Smart would say, he missed it by just that much. Threaded the needle that Boy, time. Got I tell to you the what. 32 yard line. Wesleyan was about to, Wesleyan defender was trying to jump the route and just missed the ball. But off to the races if he could have caught it, not to be first down for Coe. Little zone read. And the carry that time given to stop Co. And again, big big number 72. I think that's Cody uh, Russell, I believe. Yeah, 42. Yeah, 42. He's powering. 
through the Wesleyan defense earlier in that first quarter. Hasn't been in in a while since he lost his helmet. But uh, Coe moving now methodically. There's Coach Keller right next door to us. Yeah, he is the offensive play caller. Second and seven. Looking to throw. Pressure's on. He's got to get rid of the football. The pursuit was on. Cam Rizzell was all over him. He was right on the heels of Quentin White, and White had to get rid of the football that's to a smart move. That's avoid a smart move. taking a loss. And that's a great job by, by both sides. I mean, those are exactly the kind of plays that you need from Wesleyan and the kind of play you need from Coe. He finally breaks through, and uh, White very, very smartly just throws it out of bounds. Coe's got 12 first downs to Wesleyan's four in this game. Yeah, that's affecting the Raising Canes uh, count there. Got to get to, I think, 11. Third and seven for Coe. Got to get a pass rush. Down the far side, got somebody there, and it's caught. Touchdown. Touchdown. And wow. it's Colton White, the twin brother of Quentin White, the quarterback, on a 29-yard toss. Yeah, taking advantage of the freshman out there on the edge. And, again, this is what happens when your uh, secondary is depleted. And uh, he sees a mismatch, experience over inexperience, throws it right over the top, and he goes right inside the pylon for the touchdown. Again, you want the next man to step up. And when you have inexperienced players out there, guys with experience, they know better. They know it. And that's a great job by the co-college coaching staff to recognize a freshman on a senior. St. Louis, Missouri, you can't go wrong there. Connell's point after is good. 9.23 to go in this one in this first half. And Coe strikes again, man. 28-7 our score. Boy, I tell you, they're good. Coe Hawks are really starting to turn things up. But, again, there was a good response from Wesleyan on their last drive. I thought the defense on this drive for Wesleyan did a much better job yeah. trying to contain them and, and making Coe work to get those yards. And, and, and they did. And uh, But you got to, again, it starts at the, at the, the point of attack. And, uh, you got to make White uncomfortable in the in the backfield there. You give him time as he as he has already shown. Uh, he's a surgeon back there. So, uh, and again on third down, they, they get this, the, the the first down on the hook hook route, and then he goes up top to a guy he trusts emphatically, and that's his brother. Uh, again, you have a, a senior on a freshman. You expect to win. Here comes the kick. And Prentice Wilson Jr. will get at the two. Need a big return here. Gets up to about the 22, and he is smothered right there at about the 22 yard line. I'd like to, again, I'd love to see him in the offensive rotation somewhere. But now, again, Wesleyan with, with nine minutes, over nine minutes left. Uh, time to respond again. Again, uh, this co college, either yeah, being out front. You're playing from behind the whole time here. So you just got to keep pressing, keep pushing, keep scoring. Lawrence uh, was taken away to the locker room, so we will not have him likely for the rest of the day. Yeah, he was on a golf cart. We caught word from our remote truck downstairs as Curtis goes in motion. Here is ends. Bumps off a tackle, marches forward. He got the first down and gets up to the 35-yard line. That is a 13-yard gain for Colby Ends. Yeah, I just like, like the passion with, with, he, with, with which he's running. That's a tremendous job. Did get stuck there toward the end. But, but here we go. Speed, power. Okay, now let's just keep driving those legs, moving forward. Great job on first down. Now that gives you options if indeed you have the threat of the run to that degree. It's all The onus is not on Curdy's arm the whole time. Junior from Beatrice. Play action here. Curdy threads the needle. Pass complete. First down. Gets it at the 46-yard line. They're going to mark Logan Hughes, the tight end at the 47, who made the catch. Yeah, we mentioned him at the outset, finding some holes in this Cohawk zone. He does it there. Tremendous. And Curdy with a with a with just a dart. He can throw that football. The arm strength is there. And, of course, as you said earlier, has he overcome those two interceptions? I think so. 
They'll put Timms in the backfield. Watch him coming out of the backfield. In the flat, gets it. 50, runs into a tackle, flag thrown. This could go against Wesley, and this will probably come back. What's the infraction here? Let's see. Wesleyan's moving back. Holding, 17 on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot. Repeat first down. Gonna go against Braley Keller. Wow. And it often happens when you're running to the edge. Wide receivers have to maintain their blocks. And we just got word, John, from downstairs that Ryan Lawrence is back out. And he is in street clothes and yeah, it didn't look good as yep, he got kind of tangled. He's on a crutch. There he is. He got kind of tangled up on that out, that uh, running play to the edge. First and 16 here. Fake the option. It's a keeper by Curdy. Curdy's going to be stuffed that time. And that time he was taken down by Marquise Hastrip. Hastrip is 6'4", 240. He's out of Chicago. Second down, 16. Hastrup, he played that like a uh, stellar defensive end there. Tremendous job of just maintaining his position and then bringing down the elusive Jonathan Curdy. He would have none of it. Got to get half of it here, Jeff. At least eight yards on this second and 16. Pass over here is complete. Mathis eluding tackles. Gets across the 50, going to be marked out of bounds. Around the 46. So that helps a little bit. Yo, big time. Now you're about, oh, a little more than three and a half yards away from and getting a first down. And without each team, you know, nobody's playing man-to-man -man here. That means they're going to they're gonna be playing off. So a quick little stop route will get you a first down. But, again, you want to be careful here. Maybe a quarterback draw. If you see it, the three three receivers in the pattern here. Third about three. Curdy rolling. He's in trouble, and he's going to be sacked for a loss and a loose ball. But they're going to say he was already down, and they're going to mark him down at the 40. Boy, that's big. That's a big stop by Cole. That defense was all over in that backfield in a hurry. And that's and that's what you got to have against. A good quarterback, and that's the kind of defense Wesleyan needs as well. But give give Cole credit. Got a blitz coming on the outside there. Big number 35, Sam Moreland. They, they dial it up, and he executes. 5'11", senior for Cole. So Wesleyan forced to punt. And over in boot. Going to be picked up at the 17. And on the return is Aguilar. I believe, was that Worthington? Yeah, it's Worthington. Boy, the numbers kind of bunch up. It looks like six. I thought it was six as well. It might have been Aguilar. It looked like yep. it was Eric Aguilar. Yeah, but they say Owen Worthington. Now, Worthington's about 6'3". Yeah, exactly. Aguilar is 5'7". That looked like yeah, that was Aguilar. Yeah, that was Aguilar. You're right. Let's talk to the PA man over here. So less than six minutes to go here before halftime. Can Wesleyan find a way? Again, watch out on this edge here. Not a whole lot of guys in the pattern. There's Cody Russell, who's back in for the first time in quite a while, and he's picked up and stopped. Right across the 35 and the 36. 5'9", Jeff, 240. Come on. That's, a, that's the, a fire plug. You, you remember the the, uh, the villain from Spider-Man, the rhino? Yeah. <laughs> the cartoons, the rhino. He reminds yeah. me of the rhino. Just just destroys anything that's in his way. <laughs> and, you, and that's a great that's a great quality for him is, you know, he will not be headed, man. He he's going to tear anything up that's in his way. He's open to the backfield, but they're going to go upfield and a catch Around the 50-yard line and forced out of bounds. Reception made by the tight end, Kyle Green. 
And again, quick strike. Don't give you any time to rest. If you're not substituting, they're going to keep playing. Sometimes Wesley needs to get a, get a sub in here. Now they're trying to wear down the defense. Rolling left near side, diving grab. Did he make it? Yes. Uh, that's Bishop. That is Bishop indeed. At the 38. And, and, and for this offense, it's just all about spaces, just finding an open space. And White's job is just to just, just to hit the man that's open. Well, now it's all about stamina with this Wesleyan defense, if they can keep up. Keep up. But now Coe goes to the huddle. They were doing hurry up and trying to move the ball across midfield. Well, that means they're going to get the ball to number 42. <laughs> Perhaps. Let's see. That's what they do. Russell gets out of a tackle, still on his feet. Gets down to the 20, throws out another defender. And he's tackled out of bounds around the 11-yard line. What a run that was for Cody Russell. Yeah, you, you can see, I could see it coming. I could see it coming. When they, when they huddle, they're like, okay, let's give it to Cody. <laughs> you know, they, they know what they want to do in the passing game. Now look at this guy. This is a defensive tackle or, or a, a defensive lineman playing running back or at least a, a linebacker. Very efficient. He, no, no wasted movement there. He knows exactly where he's going and how to get there. So they'll work from the 11 on first and 10. See if you're going to try it again. They're going to go to Russell. Bumps off one tackle. Right there you go. To another. Community. Still Community tackling is what you have to do. Still trying to get to him. They finally got to him for about a two-yard loss back at the 13. you got to run to the ball, everybody, and grab the young man and put him to the ground. It takes everybody. It takes a village. It certainly does in that situation. We'll be giving you... Uh, more alums and more information about where the name Cohawk came from. And I think we've talked about this in the We have, past. we have, we have. But maybe somebody out there who's fresh and new, has, don't, they don't know. Here's Quentin White to his favorite target, Colton White. But Colton, who made the catch, was out of bounds at the time, and it goes incomplete. Yeah, the crack staff won't let, won't let me get away without it. That's the problem. Coming up at halftime, I chat with Nebraska Wesleyan Athletic Director, Dr. Ira Zeff. Isn't he a good guy? You know, he's had a pretty good run of success here since he's been on campus. Done a I mean, tremendous job. National Championship golf team, National Championship men's basketball team. Got some teams that are competitive this fall, the soccer teams, especially the women's soccer. Volleyball is doing well. Pursuits on. Pick it off. was there, and he picked it yes. up, and it's picked. It is picked by Garnas, and ricocheted off another defender, and it's Garnas who comes up with it. But we got an injured Prairie Wolf on the far side at the 10-yard line of Cole. A little ricochet action there. Now Quentin White just threw his sixth interception of the season. And we said it, Jeff. Sometimes it just happens by. Look at that pursuit. Ball just up in the air. That was a bad decision. Goes off of one Wesleyan player. Looked like he went off of Micah Dexter, and, and then Garnis was right there. there. That's a great play. And Dexter got banged up. No, oh, he got lit up. But he comes off the field. And that's a huge play for Wesleyan with three minutes left in this half. Garnis with a huge interception. That defense bows up and keeps the Cohawks out of the end zone as they were driving yet again. Junior out of Julesburg, Colorado. Here is a handoff to Enns, who takes it up to about the 20-yard line. Got a four-yard pickup on the play. So second and six coming up here for the Prairie Wolves. Under three and counting here before halftime. Now you want to be careful here that you don't go so fast that you give them the ball back with some time left. It's Curtis at the 35 to the 40. Definitely got the first down, but he's ran out. Around the 45-yard line in code territory, they're going to spot it at the 44. Yeah, he's going to be—he's going to be all conference. I don't think there's any question about that. This young man here, he's a gamer. Quick snap here ends is going to be picked up and thrown down. Literally picked up and thrown down that time by Andy Lilligraven. Back at the 46, so a two-yard loss. Yeah, try to do a quick strike on the. Uh, 
the running play there, not to be. Curdy going to run. Gets to the 44, and he may get an extra yard down to the 43. So they'll bring up third and nine. And again, this is going so fast, Jeff. I mean, <laughs> we know that the Co College Cohawks can strike quickly. You gotta, you gotta figure out what to do here on third and nine. You don't get first down here. You're gonna give them the ball back. Rolling right, Curdy. Over here on the near side, it goes incomplete. And it was Mathis who was at the 20-yard line that tried to dive for the ball. Fourth down here for Wesleyan. Two bad things happened there. You, you, you miss the play, first of all, and then you stop the clock. And, and now you're going to go for it on fourth down. you got to make this, or you're going to give them the ball at midfield. Are you serious? It's one place you don't want to have them end up. All right, here we go. Here is Curdy. Got time. Near side ends at the 15 10 5 touchdown. What a play. What a play. Ooh, mercy. Wow. What a play. He came out of the backfield, went down along the near sideline, and that thing was lofted into the air. What a grab. Well, I tell you what, give Coach Keller credit for that one. That's his play call right there, and they executed to perfection as ends went around ends and got into the end zone. And the hand slapping and toe tapping is going on. And again, this is next man up, Jeff. This is a young man. Uh, wasn't necessarily expected to be. Uh oh, Mick, did he get over it? Yeah, yes. barely. The point after is up and in. Boy, look at this. Watch this again. And look at the air. Look at the air into this one. And, and that thing open? just hung, and he was right there wide open, and nobody could get to him. That was a well-tossed ball. Touchdown, Wesleyan. <laughs> 137 left here before halftime. Let's step aside quickly and come back to Able Stadium after you see this. Joy and jubilation. When you're out to make a difference in the world, begin by exploring what inspires you at Nebraska Wesleyan University. The bridge between you and meaningful, unforgettable experiences. Designed from personal attention to internships to translate into success in your career and life. A place of powerful learning designed to explore you, discover you, propel you. Nebraska Wesleyan University. NWU. I'm going to give him a new name. Take a look at this again. Here's Curdy. And there's Enns who makes the catch Some, on the toss. Somebody lost him around, out, you know, from, from the running back position. He, he runs, a, he runs a, a wheel route. That's what they call it. Out of the backfield, down the sideline. And Curdy laid it right there in his hands. Beautiful. 43-yard toss to Enns. That capped off a six-play, 84-yard drive for Wesleyan. And now the kickoff goes into the end zone for a touchback, and Co. will have it at their own 25-yard line. If, if there ever was a touchdown, a time that a touchdown was needed. That was it. That was it. That was it right there. And, again, you're going forward on fourth down. I think it was nine. Uh, you gotta get, you got to make that happen. I mean, you can't give this team the ball at midfield with a minute and whatever was left. That was a good play. Oh, man. I'm, good I, play call Listen, I'm going to start Keller. calling it the riverboat gambler. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. So from the 25 for Coe. A minute and a half. Quentin White gets it, looking to throw. Pass on the far side, goes to his brother Colton, complete for a first down across the 35 at the 36 for an 11-yard pickup. Now somebody recognizes, and again, this is good scouting, you recognize that uh, – that Wesley, <laughs> there's the rhino. <laughs> oh boy, these guys are great down there. <laughs> the rhino. <laughs> who, That's awesome. Who came up with that? I want to know. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Jamie, Jamie's on top of it. He, he, wow. He hears, he hears my words and uh, make it a reality. Got to get him. Got to get him. Daw was on the heels of Quentin White, who threw the ball and it goes out of bounds. Incomplete. Looked like the intended target was. Matt caught the tight end. It just means I just I watched too much TV as a kid. You know, that's all it means. <laughs> you know, I watched too many. I, I love. I mean, I love superheroes. There's Cody Russell. That's who you've been referring to as the Rhino. 5'9", 240. Come on, man. But he is such a good fullback. Are for you Cole. serious? This guy's unbelievable. He is really a good player. Unbelievable. <laughs> We'd love to have him on the other side. I'll tell you that. <laughs> 
Second and ten. Far side grab. Did he catch it? Did he catch it? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Was that Colton White again? Yes. I mean, when you have confidence, I mean, from, from, from birth <laughs> in a guy, <laughs> I mean, this guy, he, he understands that when he throws it to number 18 in that direction, uh, he's likely going likely to get a catch. And uh, you can take a few more chances. That was a 10-yard pickup to the 46. Down to a minute 21 here before halftime. Coe just moving the yard markers. Another pass play over here on the near side to Colton White. Caden Daw was over there to make the stop, along with Tanner, Tanner Lamory. And now a timeout called. First time out of the Will be taken by the Cohawks with a minute 14 to go here before halftime. Now the question is, they're identical twins, but one is six foot and one is six one. What's the deal? Uh, elevator shoes? What's going uh, on? I don't know. Tall cleats? Well, I mean, you could be twins, and one could be 6'6", six, six, the other one could be 6'1". <laughs> it, it, it's funny how nature works, it's right? funny how nature works. But, uh, again, they are a, a prolific pair uh, here for the Cohawks. And, and uh, again, once again, they, they're showing themselves to be formidable here today. Uh, my challenge with the Wesleyan touchdown was – you know, we wanted, we needed that touchdown, but boy, I tell you what, giving these guys a minute and a half on the clock, I mean, that's that's like giving Brady and Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you, you just like, it, was that too much time? And now here they are, moving down the field uh, in this zone defense for Wesleyan. And again, they're doing just what they've always done: finding space. Guys are finding themselves in those spaces, and Quentin White has done done what he's always done here earlier. Again, I don't have his stats right in front of me. We'll see him here in a minute. But uh, they're trying to get another score, obviously, before this uh, half ends. Second and four. Got to get a pass rush. Blitz is on. Here comes White downfield. Knocked away by Ryan Garver. Incomplete. Wow, what a play by Garver. The basketball skills from the All-American on the hardwood pay off on that play that time. Ryan Garver out of Lincoln Northeast. Yeah, we've seen him so many times. Tip balls, knock balls away. And uh, he had a man open. Boy, that was a last-second move there by Garver. Playing center field out there. Tips it away at the last split second. Wow. Argu arguably one of the best defenders I've seen play the game of basketball. Oh, ever, ever. Remind me of Mookie Blaylock with, the, with his uncanny uh, knack to get the ball. Third down here. Pass over the middle complete to the tight end. Cop sandwiched up. And taken down by Garnis as him and Garver trying to make the stop there just outside the 35. Yeah, nice under route by, by uh, drag route by Cop. Find himself open across the middle of the field. Pitch and catch far side again. And it's Colton White who's forced out of bounds at the 30. If nothing else, you want to keep him inbounds. And now the clock stops again. And again, time is also your enemy, not just the Cohawks. Uh, you want to run this clock as much as possible. So if anything, keep him inbounds, tackle him in, get him in on the ground inbounds. 22 of 30 for 314 passing yards today for Quentin White. Yeah, don't that know. is unbelievable. That, and we're in the first half still. Here's a pass over the middle. Cop catches it. Trying to battle for it with him is Connor Adams, but it was Cop who made the catch. Went up high, Jeff, for that one. Got down to the 12. Time winding down with 40 seconds to go before halftime. If they're going to call uh, Russell the Rhino, we're going to have to call uh, White the Surgeon here. Sliding catch here to Colton White, who makes the grab at the six-yard line, and time's going to stop here with 27 seconds to go. Before halftime, I have to call him the good doctor. I mean, he is carving this thing up like no, uh, the you know the butcher, whatever you want to call him. This guy is, is just carving up this defense. But again, it, it's not it's not rocket science, folks. When you're playing a zone defense, there's plenty of space, and if you can get your receivers into that space, the quarterback's job is just to find uh, an open guy. And oftentimes, depending on whether you're looking right or left. Look at that, you know. 338 passing yards, 75% oh, completion Yeah, he hasn't today. missed much. And one of his misses was right across the middle where yeah. a guy just dropped the ball. So, uh, And he does have an interception today. Yeah, a little, little, little uh, tick up in the air. 
ping-ponged off a couple of Nebraska Wesleyan players, but he is he's playing a great game here. Now that's not a gut on him, folks. That's that's the padding around his belly. Okay, so a lot of, I mean, if I was out there, that, that that's what that would be. Well, <laughs> oh, that'd be mine too. <laughs> That'd be mine, too, Okay, my we're friend. getting a little TMI here. Too, too much information, <laughs> folks. TMI. Here is Quentin White. Ah. Oh, what a laser to his brother Colton for a touchdown. Boy, just right in there. In our secondary, again, depleted, folks. Uh, but there's no excuse. You can't have any excuses. If you're out here playing, uh, you got to come out here and, and do, do the best you can. And, again, that's just too much experience from those guys. Minute 37, I think that was on the clock. Look at this guy. Throws a laser. Right there inside the defender. He's looking for a little push off, and it may have been, but uh, the officials don't see it. And Connell with the point after, and it is good. So with 23 seconds to go, Coe goes back up by three scores again, 35-14. And a big afternoon for that man, number 17, Quentin White. Over 300 yards passing and a 75% completion rate. And we're only at halftime. Oh. So we got we got to figure something out here for the second half. Now, how many guys do you see at major level college football put up numbers like that before halftime? Well, you know, again, it's it's it, he hasn't had a, a major pass rush against him, and the time he has had the pass rush, he's thrown the ball away or eluded it. So so he hasn't made a lot of mistakes. The the one mistake he did make, uh, Wesleyan did uh, get the interception. So uh, that's what a veteran quarterback will do for you. Uh, he's been a three year starter. Uh, he knows exactly how to play this game. He knows exactly what the coaches expect from him and his teammates expect from him, and he's showing himself uh, to be an uh, all-conference caliber player here today. And another half to come. Yeah, that's the other thing. Well, Weston's going to have to make an adjustment, maybe bring another guy uh, off the edge, uh, you know, bring somebody up the middle. And Prentice Wilson, Jr. from the 7 to the 20, 30. To the 40, gets up almost to the 40. He gets up to the 37. Good return by him. Need that speed on the offensive side. A little spot at the 36, actually. He was heading toward there. It looked like he was going to get there, but good return for Prentice Wilson, Jr., a guy that you know we've kind of seen a little bit of times at running back, and even as a wide receiver, he is going to be split as a receiver with Curtis on the upper part of your screen. I think he's the kind of guy who has the kind of speed and elusiveness to make guys miss. And it's Enns is going to get the carry, and Enns is stopped around the 38-yard line, so a two-yard gain. Last Probably last play of this yeah. half. So we'll head to the locker room. And Nebraska Wesleyan, they've had some spurts of good offense this afternoon, but it's been Coe College that's come out and flexed their muscle. And Wesleyan gets the ball in the second half. So. Yep, and that will probably help things out if they want to cut away at that deficit. They're down 35-14 here at the break. Coming up in a moment, um, I'll chat with Nebraska Wesleyan University's athletic director, Dr. Ira Zeff, when we continue after this on LNK TV and the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. When you're out to make a difference in the world, begin by exploring what inspires you at Nebraska Wesleyan University. The bridge between you and meaningful, unforgettable experiences designed from personal attention to internships to translate into success in your career and life. A place of powerful learning designed to explore you Discover you, propel you. Nebraska Wesleyan University, NWU. Oh, hi there. Sorry, couldn't see you at first. I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money Saving Energy, and it's first filter Friday, so I'm just checking my furnace filter here. Looks like it's about time for a clean one, which I just happen to have right here. You know, a small investment today can really reduce your heating costs and improve your efficiency. You can really see the savings. Yeah? <laughs> for more tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. We will see you next time.
And today's halftime throwing contest is sponsored by Amigo Skis Classic. Welcome back on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network here on LNK TV. I'm Jeff Motes. I'm joined by Nebraska Wesleyan Athletic Director, Dr. Ira Zeff. Dr. Zeff, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. I'm substituting for the president, so I <laughs> feel really good. Well, it's a great day for football here at Wesleyan. Beautiful day in Lincoln. But there's other stuff happening on campus when it comes to fall sports, like volleyball teams off to a pretty good start at 12-7 and 7 overall. Cross-country team, unfortunately, has had one meet, but they're racing today uh, out in Wisconsin, too. Our fall sports have... They were off to a great start. September was a really good month for the Prairie Wolves. Uh, I mentioned volleyball off to a good start. Uh, both our soccer teams had a good start. And, and football, 3-0. and We need to get back on the winning track here in the second half. But uh, we're uh, looking forward to uh, really good things as we end the fall seasons. And when you get into the winter sports season, of course, there's talk about basketball once again here on campus. Uh, third straight year that uh, the men have been preseason rated to win the conference. Now the Wesleyan women are picked to finish sixth. Well, the women, uh, I think, had a good recruiting year. Uh, they're going to be small but uh, quick, and I think he's added some good shooters. And looking forward to that sixth spot gets, it in, gets us in the conference tournament at the end of the season. Hopefully maybe we can move up a spot or two and maybe even steal a home game. And, and with the men, of course, they, they just seem like they're reloading all the time with what Dale Wilman has built up here. Well, Dale's just done absolutely a phenomenal job, as everyone knows. Uh, you know, we got six out of eight back from uh, last year of our top scorers. Lost two really good players, but uh, I think he has some good recruits and, and a lot of experience coming back. So really looking forward to another exciting basketball season. And you got a couple of new coaching hires you want to talk about, too, including baseball. Yeah, uh, hired uh, John Rypel as our new baseball coach. Uh, John's got a great background. He's been a head coach at two different schools in Division Three, and uh, last year spent time with uh, a legendary uh, coach as an assistant at the uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham. Uh, so he's a lot of good experience and head coaching experience. I, I think he's going to do a tremendous job of building our baseball program back up. Should be interesting to see how they progress here as we get into the spring months. Let's enjoy, enjoy the warm weather for a time well, before it really gets cold just out. Just a beautiful day. and. Uh, <laughs> um, Looking forward to staying like this for a while. Let's, the AD gets credit for days like this. <laughs> it's definitely Chamber of Commerce weather, yeah, too. Absolutely. Dr. Ira Zeff, Nebraska Wesleyan's athletic director here with us at Abel Stadium. We'll come back with more in just a moment on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Hi, I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy, and I wanted to share a hot tip about keeping warm in the wintertime. Instead of turning up your thermostat, turn on a portable space heater. After all, why heat your whole house when you only want the room you're in to be warm and toasty? Oh, that, that's too, too toasty. Uh, don't, don't touch that, Gracie. For more energy-saving tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. <clears throat> we'll uh, see you next time. You're watching Prairie Wolves football on the Nebraska Wesleyan University Sports Network. We're back here at Able Stadium. Some of the first half highlights there as Coe struck first here and see a couple of big plays here for Wesleyan. Big catch there from Alex Mathis. That was in the first quarter. And, of course, Curdy that committed the uh, turnover there and picked off that time on that short jump pass. Logan Rickard coming up there. And how about this? Cody Russell, we've been talking about him. Doing a great job on offense for Coe. And again, the Coe Hawks have really have done a great job of maneuvering the football downfield, especially in the pass game. When you look at, uh, we'll look at the numbers here in a moment, but the passing yards have just been unbelievable in this first half for Coe. And there you see Bishop with a touchdown catch. And of course, Jonathan Curdy today with a big catch. Or big toss downfield to Derek Curtis that time. Also had a touchdown run of his own. And then he found uh, Colby ends on a touchdown pass later in the first half. And there you see the stats. There's the comparison quarterback-wise we'll get to in a moment. 
But you look at the passing yards, 344 passing yards for Coe versus the 229 for Wesleyan. The rushing, yeah, it's very low key, but Coe still with a decent margin there. Coe with 412 yards of total offense versus Wesleyan's 256. Now the question remains when we look at the passing yards, John, is it possible if they keep up that same type of pattern here in the second half that we could see 700 yards oh, out of this easy, quarterback? Easily, easily. And uh, I just talked to Coach Keller um, during the break here, and I said, Coach, what's the halftime adjustment? He said, stop them. <laughs> that was it. Well, <laughs> that was it. Stop them. And that, that means we get the ball, we get to score, we get back in this ball game. There you see the quarterback comparisons. One interception today thrown by White, two for Curdy. But nothing fancy from Quentin White. I mean, it, it, it's not like he's throwing a bomb every every play. You know, he, he's just picking them apart, getting as much as he can uh, on some quick out routes and some middle distance passes. And here is a fair catch going to be signaled around the five-yard line is where Brant Barth was at. And they're going to put that football up at the 25-yard line. Yeah, so... Again, stopping them, that's easier said than done. Let's see what adjustments the Wesleyan makes. But that starts with a pass rush on White. And so that's the question. Do we have a pass rush that's going to make him a little bit more uncomfortable on those short passes? But you got to keep scoring if you're Wesleyan. Big drive here to start the second half. A little zone read. Toss instead going to be complete. Logan Hughes, the tight end, works his way up to the 33-yard line, gets an 8-yard pickup. Yeah, a little sidewinder there from Curdy. Little Kent to Colby. Gene There's Garber a, action. Kent to Colby, Gene Garber, Dan all, Quisenberry. All, all submariners. And uh, the arm angle gets it to, to Hughes for a big play on first down. Now you can do some things on a short second and two. Here's Curdy out of the pistol. Gives to ends. Bumps off a tackle. Gets the first down he got to the 35, stretched up to about the 36. That's a good job by Ian. Just driving. Not a big guy, Jeff, but, you know, driving those legs nevertheless. 5'9", 175, a junior. And so he has come in and provided some, some much-needed help, though this rushing game has uh, not been prolific so far. Only 30 yards rushing for Wesleyan. Got to have the threat, though. Quick setup here on first and 10, Curdy. Going to the near side, Mathis with coverage all over him. Makes the grab around midfield. He's going to be marked out of bounds to the 46. And Mathis has come on here, Jeff. Trevor today. Eccles said that he was out of bounds well, when the so. catch was made. Let's watch this again. Oh, no, he's in bounds. Oh, he got all kind of feet. There goes Curdy. Curdy here as we go back to live action. Takes it down to the 41-yard line. Gets a pickup of five. He needs to talk to the baseball coach a little bit about some sliding. They're trying to take his head off. Now those three sidearm guys in baseball, who was your favorite? Uh, Quisenberry. Garber was mine, like Gino. Here is Curdy on the scramble, and no gain. Got, in fact, a one-yard loss to the 42. Thought he had Tims again out in the flat. Curdy, again, you got to take that flat. Don't be willing to take the flat pass. There's a guy out there wide open. Give it to him and let him do some things. You don't have to take the battering. And ends going through the middle. Gets a one-yard loss at the 43. I think he, well, they're going to go with the punting in, it looks like. Maybe. No way. No, they'll go for it. Yep, no way. And watch that watch that circle route again to get Curtis off the field. And maybe, be careful, Jeff, go with the count here. See if you can draw them off sides. Timeout going to be called by Nebraska Wesley, and they got to burn a timeout. 12.46 to go here, third quarter. Fourth and two coming up here when we come back after this on the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Oh, hi there. Sorry, couldn't see you at first. I'm Ryan with LES's Save Money, Saving Energy, and it's first filter Friday, so I'm just checking my furnace filter here. Looks like it's about time for a clean one, which I just happen to have right here. You know, a small investment today can really reduce your heating costs and improve your efficiency. You can really see the savings. Yeah? <laughs> for more tips like this, visit us at LES.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. We will see you next time.
Timeout taken by Wesley, and they're going to go for it here on fourth and two. Let's see if they're going to try to draw them off, off sides here first and foremost. Curdy under center. They're going to go to ends around left side. Cuts back in. Did he get it? Yes, he did. I think so. Nice job there. First down, and Coach Keller once again on fourth down, rolls the dice and comes up a winner. Boy, they, had it, had, they looked like they had it uh, stall there, but uh, Wesley and push forward and gets a big first down. So the clock starts to roll here. Here is Curdy. He's in trouble, needs help, and he's going to be taken down for a loss and a fumble, and it's recovered by Hastrup. And you can hear Coach Keller banging on the table next to us. Curdy missed the read. He missed the read. We could hear it well before the fumble. He missed something. And, of course, right there, boom, from behind. That's a big play. Another turnover. And you cannot give even a bad team these this many turnovers, but a good team like this, they take advantage. And be careful here, Jeff. Right after a turnover, you look to go right up top. Give them some room. Nobody gets behind. Here's Quentin White to his brother Colton around the 50-yard line, ran out of bounds. About the 48 of Westland. Yeah, he's got 10 yards cushion, Jeff, on every play. But again, that's just a fear. You got a freshman out here on the edge. You don't want to give him too much room to get past you. So you give him all that room in front, and they're just going to pick you. He's going to get, you know, pass after pass of 8, 9, 10 yards or more just because of the way the defense is set up. Now they're going to go press coverage. And a man in motion at Stopco on the jet sweep. And Garnis is there to meet up with him. And only about a two yard pickup to the 46. That's it. Nice job by Wesley in running down the line of scrimmage. Garnis there to make the tackle. Minimal gain here, second and eight. But it doesn't seem to phase Quentin White, right? White, rather. As uh, three guys in the pattern here. And again, Russell back in the ball game after a long timeout. And Russell will get the carry. And right there at the point, Wesleyan defense prevents Russell from getting any further, maybe about a yard to the 45. That's all he got. Yeah, Garrick Richter is going to limp off the field. He got a little ankle jobby there for Coe. Watch for a pass play perhaps here on third and we'll call it seven. Yeah, look for look for wherever Colton White is, that's where you better look. Trying to match up with him if you can. Lamory is matched up with him. And now Russell, out in the flat, gets the first down, finally knocked out of bounds by Garnis. They'll spot him at the 35. He, he has very light feet. And, and you may not know, know what that means, folks, but, you know, for a big guy, your feet are just, they don't, they don't hold you back. And he just puts that head down. That rhino just puts the head down and just batters right into the people, right into the players, just not fearing the physicality at all, just it's, right into it. It's a four-yard gain that time to the 31 of Wesleyan. I meant the players. I said the people. Oh, my goodness. The, well, the players are people. But he is just tough. He's tough, man. And uh, you know, that's the kind of guy you want on your ball club. Loves the contact. Power. Some speed. A little counter and go left side, and it's Russell again. Just tough to bring down. Gets the 26. He's about a yard short of the first down. And he got a great, he got a, a big break, a breather, if you will. After the second quarter, you know, his helmet went off. He went off the field uh, and was out for the better part of that second quarter. And now in the third quarter, back in the ball game, nice and rested. And contributing. Wesley needs 
Third and one here. I believe this would be fourth down, four down territory. Now White looking to throw. Got somebody down on the far side, and it's his brother, Colton, wow. who made the grab and a touchdown. Third TD for Colton White, and that was right inside the pylon. You had Adams, you had Garver over there on coverage, and he somehow made the grab. This is trust. This is, I mean, my goodness, look at this throw. And he gets it right in, oh, gets his foot down right inside the pylon. And Garver looked like he had good coverage on him, too. Wow. That's what just a great catch. What a catch. Connell with the point after. Hey, watch the minivan there. Mine's in the same general area. <laughs> 9 17 to go, third quarter. Co extends their lead. They capitalize off a of fumble. Boy. And they put another seven on the board. They lead it 42 to 14. Big time. When you're out to make a difference in the world, begin by exploring what inspires you at Nebraska Wesleyan University. The bridge between you and meaningful, unforgettable experiences. Designed from personal attention to internships to translate into success in your career and life. A place of powerful learning designed to explore you, discover you, propel you. Nebraska Wesleyan University. NWU. Hello, John Harris. I'm Jeff Motes. Glad to have you here on LNK TV and the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Boy, seven plays, 58 yards, three minutes and 11 seconds. That's all it took for Coe to go up 42 to 14. Unbelievable. I mean, these guys are they're a juggernaut if I've ever seen one. And uh, Quentin to Colton, uh, again, we, you know, we have a combination, Curdy to Curtis, but uh, they have been tremendous here today. And uh, what a, not only what a throw, but what a tremendous catch right inside the pylon. Gets the toe tap down. And a, another big touchdown for Coe College. And, again, there was good coverage from Ryan Garver of Wesleyan. I mean, he, he was right, right on there. him, right in position. But somehow, Colton White was just able to jump up right inside, kept his footing right inside the pylon, and got the six. Interesting thing about, uh, you know, the the White-White combination here is, uh, you know, Quentin knows that if he throws it toward his brother, uh, he's got a chance. And uh, that's why you take, you're willing to take more chances because you know you have a guy who can catch the ball. But the turnover makes the difference, Jeff. Here's a pitch to ends. He found an open crease there, and he gets up to about the 33-yard line. Yeah, the turnover started it all. And uh, Curdy, again, his third turnover of the day. Very uncharacteristic for him. Only yeah. two interceptions coming in. Uh, I don't know if he had – I can't remember if he lost any fumbles, but, uh, yeah, three turnovers today really helps the Cohawks. Yeah, and uh, as you mentioned, very uncharacteristic of Jonathan Curdy. This is a second and three. Looking to throw somebody over there, and it's Hughes, the tight end. Gets tangled up, made the grab at the 46-yard line. There was coverage all over him, too. Yeah, we mentioned him at the outset. Needing to come through big time, and he does. Logan Hughes, folks, high in the air, play action. Curdy steps back, nice throw there, and a nice catch high in the air over between two defenders. Nice job by Logan Hughes. And now Wesleyan. Again, Jeff, I'd like to see a little, a little bit more of a sense of urgency here. You know, we're walking out here like we got the 42 14 lead. Now you got what? Just over eight minutes left in the third. You got another 15 minutes here on the jet sweep, and it's Prentice Wilson Boy, what a play. on the carry. Good pursuit that time by Cam Elam, who came in to make the stop. He's about the same size as Russell. <laughs> Six foot 240. Just a little bit taller. Out of the Twin Cities area, Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. That's the uh, Prince area. Yeah. yeah, Brooklyn Park. Yeah. You know, if, if you know your Prince uh, location, geography. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm trying to think we're. I'll get my crack staff on as it. As I say. We'll get our crack staff on and find out for sure. In the vicinity. Screen toss. Let's ends. go. Ah. And he brought down around the 45-yard line. Proud of one-yard gain. Anthony Bullard, boy, what a play he makes. 6-1 and a junior, 181. 
fighting through traffic to make a big tackle on a screen play. And that's what you have to do as a defensive, defensive back is you know there's a lineman going to be out there. You know there's going to be a wide receiver out there. And you have to fight through, get around, navigate uh, the player so you can get to the guy with the ball. And he does a tremendous job there. So third and short. Like that long, but it's Mathis who completes the catch. What a day he's had. In Kohawk territory at the 45, he's about a yard short. You know what? You're, you're fourth and one, and you got to go, I think, at this point. Nice help here on the edge here in protection. Mathis has had a really good game today. Tremendous job. So here we go again, fourth and one. Coach Keller's rolled the dice twice on fourth down and has come up a winner. Let's see what happens here. Curdy might have to use his legs. Out of the pistol. He'll keep it. And he gets the first down to the 42. Yeah, that's what you got to do. He's running past his blocker, which I don't like. But uh, he's just running toward daylight. Well, and again, if you find a crease like that, take yeah. advantage of it. Yeah, yeah, you, you know. But again, you see here, he, he's going to – this is the play before. That's the previous play to Mathis that set up the fourth and one. Keep an eye on Tim's here in the slot. Two wideouts each side here from the 42. And Curdy's going to keep it. He's got some open space. He'll cut back in. And he got down to about the 32-yard line. He's close to a first down, maybe just short. And he was looking for Tim's, but uh, decided to pull it in, pull it, pull it down, and take off. And I'm hoping that he, he's not gun shy after those turnovers there. You would think not. You, know, you just got to, you got to, and the thing about sports, you have to keep, you got to move on. You know, you got to move on. Pass the mistakes. You got to be resilient. You got to have a, a, a short memory. Nine yards on the pickup from Curdy. Second and one. Gives you some options here. Put Hughes in motion, the tight end. They're going to air it out down the near side of Brent Barth, and it goes incomplete. It was uh, within half a yard, almost had a chance to grab that ball, and it goes incomplete here on the near side. Short armed it there. Looked like uh, Barth wasn't running uh, at full speed there, didn't seem. Quick pass, nice over top. Ah, you want him to lay out on that one, but uh, he did all, I guess he did all he could, putting his arms out as far as he could. Again, where's Curtis? Haven't heard from him in a while, Jeff. Want to get the first down here, give him some opportunities. So out of the pistol, here is Enns. Boy, that's short. And he is going to be stopped for no gain. Looks like right at the 33, that'll bring up fourth and a yard. Yeah, no question about four down territory. Press ahead. Let's see what's coming in. Coach Keller calling the play. Big play for both teams here. Of course, the defense wants to get off the field, get that offense back on. Wesleyan has to sustain something here. And Curdy, no, it's a draw play for Curdy. It is as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Thought they were going to go to a Wildcat set up with somebody else, but it was Curdy that did it, and he kept the ball and moved it down to the 30-yard line to sustain the drive. Yeah, not a big guy by any stretch of the imagination, 5'9", 180, but tough. That's what it is. It's the old, not, you know, not the size of the dog in the fight, you know. Right. And so uh, now it's time to look for Curtis. Of course, Mathis has had a, a, a nice day as well. Curdy. Toss to Logan Hughes, the tight end, who was undercut and stopped by Hunter Simmeroth. That's one of the first times that we've actually mentioned his name in quite a while. Yeah, I haven't heard from him very much today. He's been very quiet. But, but again, Wesleyan has not tried to throw a lot of long bombs today. Yeah, and that's a nice stop. Doesn't go for the legs, goes around the upper thigh area for the tackle. So give credit to him for uh, not doing that, which is going to hurt the guy even more. You make that kind of hip hip tackle with the shoulder. It's a nice nice form tackle by Simaro. Second and eight. 
Little zone read, Curdy. Toss to Hughes, complete. Hughes is picked up and stopped by the linebacker, Brian Robertson. Nice one-hander there. Didn't get a whole lot of y yards out of it, but... Uh, Gets to the 26. Nice job by both Curdy and Hughes. So once again, every, every series here is four down territory. But again, you, you know, just like white to white, Curdy to Curtis is our combination. And so you, you have to look look for that. 240 to counting here in the third quarter. Got him. Curdy pass is complete around the 20 yard line, maybe short of the first down. Let's see where they mark the ball. Curtis was open. Catch made by Mike Calicott, the running back, senior out of Hastings. Fourth and short, about a half yard. That's all that Wesleyan needs to sustain the drive. Yeah, Curtis was right behind him, right in an open spot. And he took the shorter route. But, but again, big, big fourth and one. Curdy has run it the last couple times, Jeff. I'm sure they're looking for that. Going to go for it here on fourth and short. And it's going to go. And they're going to get the first down down to the 17-yard line. That's a great job. Wesleyan winning at the point of attack. Nice job there that time. And this drive has taken probably a little bit longer than yeah. you want, but that's okay. That was DeMica Burton, the running back, the freshman out of Ralston, that made the run. And so the drive continues for Wesleyan from the... Co 17-yard line. And what's good about this is it keeps the co offense off the field. Finally put some wear and tear on the Cohawk defense. Here is Curdy. Pass toward the far side. We're in grab attempt. It goes incomplete. And it was Hughes, the tight end, that he was looking for in the far corner. Brian Robertson for a second time, Jeff. Breaks it up with the hands as the receiver tries to pull it in. Now he's not looking back, but now as the receiver tries to pull the ball in, he puts his hands in there and uh, dislodges it. That's a good job by him. He did that against uh, Curtis the first time down at the other end. Second and 10. So again, single coverage, Derek Curtis at the top. Will he look to him? He goes to ends. Ends takes it to about the 15. He gets two on the pickup. Now, I want to mention something here. The reason why we have not seen Wesleyan go for a field goal, especially within field goal range, they're 0 for 2 this year in field goal attempts. So I think in situations here, if we see Wesleyan on this next play come up short of the first down, and go for it again, you're going to know why. That seems to be happening at every level. You know, confidence in the kicker. Here is Curdy. Pressure's on, eluding tackles, throws the ball to Curtis. Who makes the catch? Touchdown! Nebraska Wesleyan. What a play <laughs> by Curdy. We've been looking for that combination to click here today. And they come through here at a big time. Curdy gets out of trouble, and there's trouble to be had here. And there it is. And watch the flick. Whoop. There it is. And guess who? Pretty in pink. Great job by Derek Curtis to get open. Point after attempt is up, and it is good. So with 37 seconds remaining here in this third quarter, Westland puts six on the scoreboard, plus the point after they trail 42 to 21. When you're out to make a difference in the world, begin by exploring what inspires you at Nebraska Wesleyan University. The bridge between you and meaningful, unforgettable experiences. Designed from personal attention to internships to translate into success in your career and life. A place of powerful learning designed to explore you, discover you, propel you. Nebraska Wesleyan University, NWU. Well, just like that, Nebraska Wesleyan 
Puts another seven on the scoreboard. A much needed seven. And we're going to call Curdy the Picasso because uh, he definitely was drawing, drawing it up there in the dirt. And, 15, uh, 15 yards. Tremendous. 17 plays, 75 yards, 8 minutes of 40 seconds. That's how long it took the drive. And that's that, that's it's good and bad. Uh oh, there we go. It goes into the end zone. And the return man for Coe, which is, I believe, A.J. Christensen, takes a knee. Yeah, that, that was uh, – he, he hit that in the field of play and knocked it into the end zone. And since he didn't actually have – a possession outside the, the end zone. And here it is. Broken play here. Curtis steps up. And now he sees Curtis and throws it. A nice catch by Derek. That's a big catch. He affirms what the officials affirm. Touchdown. It's hard to believe that that same kid that's a receiver had been a very valuable receiver for this football team was at one time a quarterback. Here's an option pitch. Around right side, past the 30, toward the 35, short of there. Ball carrier that time. Garver's trying to get a hold out there on the edge, Jeff, and he, and he, would, uh, he was right. Uh, he was being held by, I think, uh, Colton White. And uh, you could see it because his, his uh, shoulder pad was coming out of his, uh, his jersey. The ball carrier is Monico Requena, who is listed as a wide receiver. And now the third quarter comes to a close here at Abel Stadium. But it's still a three-score ball game in favor of Coe College. We head to the fourth. Coe leads at 42-21. to I just wanted to get good grades and to do well. But I also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience. Not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that. And it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. Here's the quarterback comparison through three quarters. Well, the pass completion percentage, they're equal. Yeah, look at that. And uh, Curdy's catching up in the passing yards. Uh, White just short of uh, 400 yards. And he has not run the ball. No, he hasn't. Really hasn't had to he do hasn't it. Hasn't had to. No. And around left side is Russell again. And they'll move the yard markers. That'll be a first down. Yeah, Russell's averaging about eight yards per carry in this ball game, Jeff. Just over now about 70-some yards. I want to mention that Wesleyan football powered by Lincoln Electric System here on LNK TV. Also, thanks out to Quality Water Services, Madsen's Bowling and Billiards, Petro Family Dental Health, Rotella's Italian Bakery, Joyce Sherwood of Central Financial Services, too. So first and 10 from their own 36. Russell around left side. Gets to the 40-yard line. Gets four yards on the pickup. Stopped he, by Broughton that time. He just puts his head, his head down and just batters right into the defenders. He's just like challenging the defender to tackle him. He's not afraid of contact. <laughs> I think that's blatantly obvious. That's blatantly obvious. But, but you mentioned how light he is on his feet for yeah. a kid his size. I mean, he... He does a good job running that football when called upon. Yeah, tremendous job. Have, haven't seen him catch the ball here today, but. Pass over here on the near side is complete at the 46-yard line and enough for a first down. Eric Aguilar is the guy that made the catch. And a nice tackle by Garver. You have to tackle out there in space, not give any more yards after the catch, and he does that out on the edge. And again, this offense, take, slowing it down a little bit here, Jeff. Uh, they were coming up to the line of scrimmage in a hurry in the first half, now being a bit more methodical with what's happening here. Wesley and defense get to take a little rest between plays. 
First and 10, this is from the 46. Colton White out here, single coverage. They're gonna go to Russell left side and the Prairie Wolves defense that time doing a good job of reading that. Anthony Gallardo was right over there to meet up with him. But they threw him ahead. <laughs> That's you, the thing, he threw him ahead up to the 49. Yeah, you tackled him ahead. You threw him for about two more yards. Not like he needs help. Beautiful field here at Nebraska Wesleyan. This turf is in prime condition. They had the new one installed here, I think, about five years ago, I think, or four or five years ago, sometime in that time frame. There's a pitch and catch on the far side. Adams forces Connor White or Colton White out of bounds. So a new set of downs here for Coe as they get to the 43 of Wesleyan. So now uh, White's over 400, and his brother is uh, over 170 yards receiving. So that's, that was his 14th reception of the day. So it's been pitch and catch for those guys. And Colton White already has three touchdowns, Jeff. Uh, that sounds like a pretty good day. Yep, it certainly does. This is a good football team. They're going to go Wildcat. That's Teeple. And he's going to go down the far sideline. Teeple ran out of bounds around the 11 of Wesleyan. And that's what they tried to do earlier. Uh, they got a penalty, so it didn't work. But that play, they, they hike it to Teeple, and he's around left side, folks, down the sideline. Teeple. Not, not all the way, not able to get all the way home. From suburban Des Moines. The Ankeny, Iowa area. Right on the north side of Des Moines. Yep, been there. Usually when you're heading uh, from Lincoln to uh, Minneapolis, you stop there. And Teeple again will get it out of the Wildcat. And uh, doesn't look like any gain on the play still at the 14-yard line. Well, yeah, if you're going to take... Go up toward 35, take that north toward Minneapolis, or maybe go around the north side if you're heading east on 80. Yeah, you're yep. going to go through Ankeny. Going to go through Ankeny, Iowa. Make a quick little stop there. That's uh, Hawkeye territory. It's Cyclone territory. That's it. You're right in the middle. Yeah, Cyclone territory. And these Cohawks, you know, their name means like a hawk. Second and nine. Now White in trouble. He's got a scramble. Broughton is on his tail, and he's going to run it for the first time, and he takes it down inside the five-yard line to the Wesleyan four. And he may have picked up a first down. He may be just short. They're going to spot him at the five. And, and he doesn't want to run, but uh, given the opportunity here, he takes full advantage, and there you go. Reverses field, holding the ball like a, lo a loaf of bread there. Now tucks it under. It's just a great job of just making something out of nothing. Third and a yard to go. The ball at the five of Wesleyan. They're going to give it to Russell. Why not? And he's going to be short of the goal line, stopped at about the one. Yeah, this is this is a definitely a primer in team tackling because when you have this guy out there, there's nobody, no one person going to tackle you. It's going to take several guys. Yeah, so, so you have to run to the ball, and uh, you have to put a number of bodies on him. So you got a guy holding his leg. you got a, two guys holding the, the right left arm, one guy holding the right arm. We need another guy on the right leg. 5'9", 240. He's tough. And light on his feet. I so. wish. And he's going to get the carry and takes it right into the end zone for the touchdown. Standing up. That's something. He's a good player. <laughs> he, he picks up the <laughs> lineman. He picks up the lineman. Are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> Usually the lineman pick up the running back. But this time the running back picks up the lineman. <laughs> I have never seen such. Are you kidding me? Oh, boy. Wow, look at that. Here's the point after from Connell. It's up. It, it is good. 9.31 to go. And 
Co extends their lead back up to 28, 49, 21 over the Prairie Wolves back after you see this. Hi, I'm Ryan with Elliott's Save Money Saving Energy and I wanted to share a hot tip about keeping warm in the wintertime. Instead of turning up your thermostat, turn on a portable space heater. After all, why heat your whole house when you only want the room you're in to be warm and toasty? Oh, that, that's too, too toasty. Uh, don't, don't touch that, Gracie. For more energy saving tips like this, visit us at les.com or do a search for LES Video Vault on YouTube. <clears throat> we'll uh, see you next time. Co College of 49 21 on Nebraska Wesleyan here at Abel Stadium. Fourth quarter of action, 9 31 to go in this one. 11 plays, 75 yards, six minutes, one second to be exact on that drive for Co. And Brant Barth gets it to six, past the 15 to the 20, and he's tripped up around the 25 yard line. There's a nice contingent of uh, Co College, Coke Hawk uh, fans here on this uh, south side of the uh, the ends of the stands here. So they got a, quite a following hey, down here. You know, it's a quick trip down, about three hour, maybe four hour trip. If you're coming from Cedar Rapids, and of course you get people over Central Iowa that. Want to make the trip? You know, they kind of just pick up the interstate, head down, and yeah. you're here. And if you're going to be small in number, you're going to be big in voice. There's Colby Enns behind a block. Trying to get up to the 30-yard line. They're going to mark him down at the 29. There's been a lot of, you know, and maybe fans, you may have seen this, you may not, but there's been a lot of guys helping other guys up here in this game today. Uh, you know, that's just a sportsmanship at this level. Here's Curdy. He's got Hughes again, and he dropped the ball, and he is down. Yeah, he took a shot. He took a big hit, and he is. Yeah, he's going to come off to the side. Yeah, there. he's kind of holding his right shoulder. Yeah, that was right there over the middle, and he took a shot. Let's see if he gets any attention over there. I know they often have the little tent. Curdy in the pocket. And he is going to be sacked. He was trapped. Back at the 23-yard line, he was trapped. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, Jacob Walsh, uh, his man got around him, got Curdy from behind. He, was, he showed his frustration by ripping off his uh, snaps on his helmet. He realized that he, he, did, he didn't hold his block, and now Wesleyan, I, I, we haven't seen a punt in quite a while from either team. That was a quick three and out for Wesleyan. And the punt's blocked. And it's going to be scooped up and pounced onto the end zone for a touchdown. And that's A.J. Christensen who pounced on top of that on the blocked punt. And just like that. Just like that. It's 55-21 with the point after coming up. And we mention it all the time. It's not just offense. It's not just defense. It's special teams. And he breaks through. Somebody, oh, missed it right there on the block. 52 for Wesleyan. And that's uh, Hayden Penny. We talked about him in a stellar way earlier, but he misses a block there. And uh, that gives the Cohawk an opportunity to get right through there for the block of the punt and the recovery for the touchdown. 56-21 our score now with 8-10 to go. And what a defensive effort that was. You know, the block punt and, you know, it's it's almost as if now, after just seeing, you know, what we saw in that last drive, has his offense ran out of steam? Has the confidence level dropped considerably? You know, what what are you looking for now? Well, I mean, it's not uh, like, you, you know, you're, you're trying. But, uh, you know, the one thing about this America Rivers Conference that we have found out 
is that you got good teams. There are some very good football teams. I mean, teams. It's, it's just as simple as that. You know, and, and we, we will allude to this every so often, you know, for years and covering games, you know, for many years it was the GPAC, you know, when Wesleyan was the dual affiliate with Division Three NCAA and also the NAIA. You know, we saw teams like Doan, you saw Midland, you saw Hastings. Concordia. You, Concordia. Even Dana, when they were around yeah, for Morningside. years. Morningside. Morningside, Briarcliff, Dakota Wesleyan. For many years, Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls, yeah. And Sioux Falls was – they were they were the team in the league for a long Tr time. And then they me. And then they moved up to <laughs> Division Two, And they've had a great run in Division Two. And Morningside became the team of the league. They were the face of that GPAC conference. But if you look at some of these teams – in the American Rivers Conference, and you look at the GPAC, the ARC may have better talent. Man, these all, all all around these talent. These guys, these guys, and my son played for Concordia, and I watched a lot of GPAC football. But this American Rivers Conference, these teams, uh, there's some tremendous players here. We've seen one, a number of them today. A number, of them, a number of them today. Ball carrier that time for Westland happened to be to Micah Burton again, the freshman out of Omaha, who played his high school ball at Ralston. And you know what we've seen over the last several years, Jeff? Is, you know we've seen tremendous quarterback play, we've seen oh, tremendous yeah. wide receiver and running back play. I mean, the offensive talent in this league, and also uh, as you can as we've seen here today, even the defensive talent uh, has been tremendous. And Westland every week has you know has their has, has a challenge. Uh, formidable challenge right in front of them. No doubt about it. No cakewalks. No easy pickings here. Into traffic. The ball from Curdy on the toss looking for Prentice Wilson Jr. Knocked down incomplete. That'll bring up third and eight for Wesleyan. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed because when we first came in, what was it, uh, 2016 or 17? Yeah, 20, when Wesleyan, three years ago. Yeah, when Wesleyan finally – made the switch over to full-time Division three level status and joined this conference, we weren't sure what to expect. Not at all. I mean, we came into this thing, you know, with blinders, not knowing what to expect from these teams, but you learn to respect them as Curdy gets out of a tight situation, looks downfield, the oh. pass is overthrown, intended for math is incomplete. That's going to bring up fourth down, the punting unit will come out, but... You came in with blinders, and then all of a sudden you're like, wow, these are some good football well, we teams. we can see clearly now. And and, <laughs> and no doubt about it. You grew to respect these programs like Coe, Dubuque, uh, Loris, Wartburg. Yeah, Simpson, all of them. They're all good football programs. And, and you know what's interesting, you know, as uh, as we have done over the last couple of years and those who have been following us, you know, we also – we these schools are also schools with great history – uh, with great academic and, and uh, sports traditions, as we even mentioned some of the alums from uh, Coe College today. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's tremendous all the way around. You get to learn about schools maybe that you, you know, haven't learned much about. You know, you know we, we see now, even with mentioning the, the, the people from uh, Coe College today, you know, Marv Levy, Bill Fitch, you know, from the Boston Celtics. I mean, you've got, you've got some good – connections to famous names that had made it big not just in athletics but in other other avenues no no doubt about it and the, the one thing that about not just this conference but division three level of college athletics it's very academic oriented so yeah you got a lot of a lot of folks here i mean if we went through the whole list new quarterback in for co college Max Ridnour will come in. He's a senior. Carry by number 36, Monaco Renekwok. And Monaco Requena was the guy that carried the ball that time. Second and nine at the 50. But I can easily see this now, this being our third or fourth year covering ARC football. We've got a newfound respect for these programs like Co, like Luther, Loris and Dubuque and, and Wartburg and Simpson, they, they're all tremendous football programs. 
And then when you go to the basketball court, I mean, there's some good, talented teams. Wartburg's had some great basketball teams. Wesleyan's been kind of the forefront. I mean, it, being a newcomer into the league. Yeah, exactly. They, they've kind of taken control of that. Well, the other thing is, you know, as you, as you go through this first few years of, of learning about these teams and knowing, uh, you know, what they're all about, you also find out some, a lot of things about yourself and what level of talent you need to get to to be able to com compete against them. Rittenauer throws a pass on the far side. It goes incomplete. He was looking for Owen Worthington, sophomore wide receiver out of Pleasantville, Iowa. So a three and out. And so Coe will be forced to punt here. We're down to 549 here in this game. Next up for Wesleyan, next weekend they go to Pella, Iowa. They take on Central College. There's a famous name from Pella. Here's the punt. Nice spiraling punt. Takes a bounce around the one. Are they going to say it was a touchback? Yeah, it's a touchback. So they go to Central next week. Two weeks from today, they're back here in Lincoln to play Loris. And then they go to Luther on November 9th. And then they got Dubuque here to wrap up the regular season on November 16th, which we'll have here on LNK TV. So our next two broadcasts will be November 2nd with Loris, November 16th against Dubuque. All right here on LNK TV and the Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network. Famous name from Pella, Iowa. Hmm, let me uh, let me dig into my bag. I'll here. give you a clue in a moment as Burton gets the carry. About a T yard pickup to the twenty two. Likes to shoot a lot of threes. Likes to shoot a lot of threes. He's a specialist and he's in the NBA. Oh, Kyle Corver. Yep. Kyle Corver. Kyle Corver. And he's playing now with, I believe, the Bucks. Yeah, I think you're right because he's I working. Think he, I he's think, working with Giannis. Yeah, I think he's playing for Milwaukee. Tecupo. Yeah, he's working with him on his three-point shooting. Here's Burton again, trying to cut around right side, and he is stopped. And I think they're going to give him a one-yard loss back at the 21. So there's your central Iowa, well, Pella, Iowa connection. Yeah. And, of course, there, there, there are many more from Pella, Pella Iowa. Pella Windows. Have you been to Central before? I've not been to that campus, no. I, I have been there. Well, what was it, about a year or so ago, they had a – Outbreak of bad weather and a tornado went through and clipped that Pella Windows plant. New quarterback for Nebraska Wesleyan in as well. Get you a name on that. That's Carter Terry, the freshman out of Grand Island Northwest. That'll bring up fourth down. Carter Terry, one of the more highly regarded quarterbacks in Class B. Yeah, Harry, Harry Smith. You remember Harry Smith from CBS? Yep. He's a contributor for NBC now. Yeah, he, he's a Pella grad. And a uh, former Miami Dolphin. Remember Vern Denherter? I've heard the name. Yep, he's a Pella, a Pella grad. Here's the boot. Nice spiraling punt. Fair nice catch, catch waved at the 42. Nice catch by Aguilar. That's a nice punt. So just over four minutes to go. So that's what's coming up next week for Wesleyan. They go to Central College. And, uh, you know, Coach Keller, you know, with, with uh, point sixty-one last week in terms of points given up, and then 56 this week. Again, the brain trust there. Trying to figure out exactly how to turn this thing around. And Started you, the season very well. And you mentioned earlier, since there's injuries that they've dealt with, it's next man up. That's kind of the, the mantra of football. You know, if you get guys that are your studs and they get hurt, everybody's susceptible to getting hurt. Yeah, that's, that's a part of the down, game. If they go down, it's true. It's Next man up, yeah. you get a step up. And uh, with the challenge, and I think uh, what has happened here today, and we've seen it, 
where you scout the other team and you rec recognize where the mismatches are. And, and uh, Colton White is a, a mismatch nightmare, wh whether the guy's a senior on the other side. But he has a freshman up against him today, and they took full advantage of that opportunity yeah. uh, to, to throw the ball to him and give him an ample opportunity for over 170-some yards on about 14 or 15 carries. How about this? Working to the edge here on the near side. Requena going out and uh, forced out of bounds. Garnis is over there for Wesleyan. And Lamory is over there as well. Yep, Tanner Lamory was there. But nevertheless, the first down. But I think when you look at it, again with the next man up, Colby Ends has really stepped up. Really stepped up today. Did a good job. Oh, big time as big a running time. back. You know when Lawrence went down. But again, the turnovers um, really, really hurt West. That that hurt early. Yeah, you can't give a good team like this that kind of momentum. Uh, you can't give them a short field. Though the first interception was down deep and. Uh, near the goal line. They had to go 96 uh, yards for that touchdown. And there's Jacob Lawrence there uh, with the crutch. I, I'm not, I'm not, I guess uh, that one crutch is just for some support. Yeah. As opposed to needing the two. But that second, second interception uh, put them in prime real estate. I tell you, across midfield. And then on the first play, it was at 37 yards for the touchdown, I believe that was to Bishop. And that was a beautiful pass oh, play, tremendous. that post route. Good job there. Good read on the defense. That time to make the stop. I think Andrew Mastis was there too, along with Spencer Brooks. Yeah, and that was just a, a, a play, a, a, a great play, reflective of the three R's that you got to have if you're on defense. You, you first have to read, you know, recognize, and then react. And he did, he did all three there and made a nice stop behind the line of scrimmage. So third and six. Quina gets the carry, and he fights for extra yards. Did he get the first down? He is close. He got to the 36, had to get to the 35. He's going to be a yard short. Yeah. 115 and counting, and so, boy, a tough one to swallow. Wesleyan will drop their third straight game. Had a great start with wins over Westminster, Illinois College, the non-conference, open up the Conference schedule at Buena Vista back on September 15th with a big win. And then the heartbreaker at homecoming against Simpson two weeks ago. And they had chances in that game. Quino with the carry gets the first down to the 35, and the clock will stop with just over 42 seconds to play. Well, what this does, it, you know, it gives you, once again, another opportunity to look at some tape. Uh, you know, see what, we, what we're doing well, what we're not doing so well. Make the adjustments. Again, the younger guys are getting some experience, uh, albeit, you, you know, you want to keep their confidence up because uh, when you're playing a team like this, you know, you get torched, your confidence goes down. You want to be careful there. Knee will be taken, and I think they're both going to meet up at the 50-yard line to shake hands. Coach Keller making his way down from the press box. And who, who's number one in line there? Well, who was number one? That was the Rhino, Cody Russell. And I say that uh, with all kind of affection, folks. A lot of respect for that young oh, man. Are you kidding? Are He's you kidding? tough. I'm going to go down there and shake his hand. Well, hopefully he doesn't squeeze too tight. <laughs> <laughs> Time runs out here at Able Stadium and Coe College. Comes into Lincoln. They pick up a 56-21 victory. Over Nebraska Wesley in this afternoon. So the Prairie Wolves drop their third straight. They fall to three and three on the campaign. And uh, they'll try to regroup here for next weekend's trip to Central College. And they'll be back here two weeks from today here in Lincoln to host Loris as we get into the month of November. So there you have it. Final score today. Co College 56, Nebraska Wesley in 21. For Jamie Wenz, Bo Wolf, for John Harris, and the rest of our Nebraska Wesleyan Sports Network crew, I'm Jeff Moats. Thanks along. Thank you for watching this afternoon. Have yourself a good afternoon, and we say so long from Abel Stadium here in Lincoln.
Today's Nebraska Wesleyan University Sports Network broadcast was made possible by Lincoln Electric System. It's your electricity. Own it. And Nebraska Wesleyan University. NWU.